Poor chicks. 50. Hold it. Come on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. 60, baby. <laughs> oh, land shark carnicles. That's all I got for you now. Caught me a few years ago. Yeah, 100 was easy. <laughs> Woo. All right, a beautiful day, guys. All right, preloaders. VI preloaders. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm out of breath. You do 60 push-ups and tell me you're not going to be out of breath. Especially since I've been slacking. i got to get my crap together. Um, so you know what? I'm not even going to blame my age. <laughs> because at the end of the day, if I was doing this consistently like I used to, it doesn't matter. My body would be accustomed to it. But I'll get it back, guys. All right, for those of you that have never been to this channel before, this is not a workout channel. Land Shark Chronicles, Land Shark Chronicles. Uh, Marquis started this, actually, I think Wood Jr. started it. A little push-up challenge. You guys know, if you grab the front brake at slow speeds, that's a 10 push-up penalty out here or anywhere you're riding your motorcycle. Matter of fact, check this guy out. Hey Robert, this is Richard Bushy from Stratford, Missouri. I was doing really good on my practicing today, but I grabbed the front brake coming to a stop sign. So here's my 10 push ups. Hopefully, I won't have to do that again. Just outstanding. Again, I love a disciplined preloader. And guys, if you find yourself grabbing at that front brake at slow speeds, pulling at it, whatever, show me how disciplined of a preloader you are. Send me a video of you doing 10 push-ups next to your motorcycle, next to the thing you violated the rule on. <laughs> All right, again, it's not about the push-ups. It's not a competition. It's about what the push-ups represent. We're trying to get you to break a bad habit. Um, practice is gonna do that, of course. But that's what that's all about, all right? Everything, everything is done out of fun. And now that I think about it, Wood Jr. is actually the one. He started this because <laughs> Wood Jr. passed me in the same lane. And I gave him a 25 push-up penalty. And then he did it again. And it should have been a 50 push-up penalty. <laughs> and um, then after that, he decided to throw it out there and ask people to do push-ups next to their motorcycle. Not for a penalty, I guess just to do it. It's a challenge. And Land Shark Chronicles... I think he, he bust out 100, Wood Jr. did 50, so that's what that's about. Anyway, guys, for those of you, like I said, guys, if you're, here, if you're here for the first time, my name's Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant. Name of this channel is called Robert Simmons Paying It Forward. And on this channel, we have a ball. What do we have a ball doing? Learning. I share my knowledge, experience, and training that I received from the elite NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle unit with you guys. And I focus on riding these things one to 10 miles per hour, slow speed motorcycle operation. So important because that's the range of speed where people are terrified of these. And that's why you see people feet coming out. You know, I want to cheat. I want to teach you to be the boss of this motorcycle. That's what this shirt it says. And that's what it means. I want you to be the boss. When you slow down and you feel nervous at that point, you're so intimidated. You're clearly not in control of that thing. So you're not the boss. The motorcycle is. But I want you to be the boss. Okay. Speaking of t-shirts, this is the new one, new design. Be the boss of your motorcycles, way bigger. Different picture now with some color in it. And on the back, it doesn't just say preload now. It says preload and keep it loaded because and keep it loaded, guys, is so important. All right? And of course, it also has my channel name and now the YouTube symbol. Because everybody doesn't know what preload, everybody doesn't know Robert Simmons paying it forward is a YouTube channel. Okay? But anyway, guys, that's what this channel is about. 
I'm out here today. This is practice session number 38. This is Pula, Georgia, where I am. I do these practice sessions. I try to do them on a weekly basis, Saturday or Sunday. Um, if you're interested in coming out here and practicing with me, go to my website, read the information, and follow it, and we'll get you out here. I also do private lessons. Everybody doesn't want to practice on YouTube or in a group. So if you're interested in that, same thing. Go to the same website and go to where it says private lessons. All right, guys? I do product reviews and installs on my motorcycles. And guys, anything that I feel is relevant or beneficial to you, I'm always going to share it with you. Always. All right, guys? All right, guys. Let me get some uh, administrative stuff out of the way with you guys. April 2nd. April 2nd is the Preloader Global Group Ride. And for those of you that don't know what the hell that is, I'm hosting a group ride here in Pula, Georgia. We're going to be leaving from this parking lot at 10 o'clock, and we're going to be taking a ride um, up to Beaufort, South Carolina. It's about an hour to get there, maybe a little bit over an hour to get back based on the routes that I'm choosing. Um, and of course, I want you guys to join me. As I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but listen, guys, I know everybody's not going to be able to make it here. So if you can't make it here, this is why this is global. No matter where you are in the world on April 2nd, you, a bunch of other preloaders or whoever you want to ride with, or even if it's you by yourself, take a ride, take a picture of yourself and your group, take a video, two minutes or less if it's going to be a video, and make sure it's 1080p or more, but you know, 1080p is fine. Anything less, it's grainy. Anything more, it's going to be more difficult for you to send it. But send me those videos, send me those pictures, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of that information together in one video. And when I put that video out of the global ride, you are going to be in that video too, okay? And I'm looking so forward to that because it's going to show where you're from and your group of people that you're riding with and, and, and pieces of the ride if you record it, right? How awesome, how awesome is that going to be? Really looking forward to that, guys. So if you're interested in t um, doing that, start planning for it now because before you know it, April 2nd is going to be here. Um, and lastly, guys, the traveling practice sessions, all right? I usually don't like to say stuff uh, to you guys before I'm sure it's going to happen. But uh, what I am sure about is the New Jersey and the Maryland practice sessions, those are full already. In any case, I would love it if you guys came out anyway. All right. I would love to meet you. And that's just, you know, it's all about the meetings to me. OK, so again, that's May 14th. I'll be in New Jersey. All right. And I'll let you guys know the exact location later. And May 15th, I'll be in Maryland. And like I said, guys, I was thinking about throwing in um, on the way home, maybe North Carolina. But again, if, if somebody out there in North Carolina has a location and it's feasible, yeah, we could do that. And lastly, guys, this is the thing I was talking about where I said I don't like to tell you stuff unless I'm sure about it. Um, I'm thinking about going to Florida, too. And the guy that I did a private lesson with, he's going to reach out to a Harley Davidson dealership. Um, I think it's down by Orlando. And um, see if we can use that location. If that happens, I'm going to do that one well before May because the weather's already good down there, right? So um, just just keep that in mind, guys. Keep it in your back pocket. And if that's something that you're interested in, you know, you can start letting me know now. I'll start a list because at this time, I'm not taking any money from anybody. So it doesn't hurt me to put your name on a list. So you have a spot reserved for the location that's going to be in uh, Florida. All right, guys? All right, guys. So. I'm going to get started out here. I got a VI preloader, Andy. He's already here. I got four or five more guys coming. So it should be a good day. We got good weather. It's overcast. It's only going to be like 71 today. So that's always good. Perfect, perfect weather to be out here practicing. All right, guys. Listen, I appreciate all of you guys. I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. All right. Enough jibber jabber. Time for me to get riding. All right, guys. So today, if you're looking at this part of the motorcycle, that's okay. because That's what I actually want you to see. Let's look at my speed while I'm out here.
Disregard that speed. That speed to get your push-ups. All right, guys, we're gonna get started. We have some VI preloaders out here. We got one more that might be, should be on his way. If he comes, I'm gonna be surprised because he did an iron butt challenge. I think, I don't know what time they got back this morning, but that's a long time to be on a motorcycle. Anyway, let's see who we got here today. We got, we got uh, Andy over there hopping up and down on his motorcycle, but we're gonna to talk to him last because he's been here before. Everybody else, it's their first time here. So I am happy to announce, I stepped up my game I actually have something to hold the mic. I had a ghetto set up before. It was just some makeshift thing with a zip tie. <laughs> there you go. Now I want to let you guys know, you know, we're not doing the beatbox out here, so you don't have to hold it to your mouth. It'll pick you up. What's your name, sir? Andrew Brodus. Andrew, um, where are you from? I'm from Palm Coast, Florida. And how long have you been riding a motorcycle? Since about 1965. Whoa. And guys, you ready for this? I'm, I, Andrew's going first for a reason because he's got something out here that has never been out here before and I've never seen one in person. What are you riding today? Uh, Moto Guzzi, California. Oh, let's take a look at it. And I want you to tell us what made you get this motorcycle? Because you have more than one motorcycle, right? Right. What's uh, your other motorcycle? My other motorcycle is an Indian Roadmaster. And I wanted to have a uh, bike that I could loan out to people to come visit me in Florida because I live kind of close to Daytona. People come down there quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I wanted a bike that was big enough to carry two people comfortably. And I wanted something much different than a, an Indian. So Harley was a little bit too close. So uh, I had ridden Guzzi's in the past and always was thrilled with the way they handled. Mm -hmm. I've never ridden this model before, but I found it on the internet and uh, they actually 
put it together and then took it back apart, put it back in the crate and shipped it to me, UPS freight, and the semi showed up in my driveway two days after I bought it. Wow. Wait a minute, this is your loan out bike? This is the bike you loan out? Uh, well, I let my friends ride it. Look at that. That is cool, man. That is cool. Can you do me a favor? Just turn it on. I want to see these back lights. All right, we got LED. Very nice. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed motorcycle operating skills? Well, uh, I'd say I was probably about 6. Six is outstanding, man. Outstanding. Well, I don't know. Uh, exactly I'll rate how myself you, an eight. How you rate? Okay. I, th I was thinking like nine and ten are like the super people that participate in competition. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, seven is somebody that knows how to get towards that. Mm -hmm. And six is just somebody who is a little bit above average. I figure five is average. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good. There's no wrong answer. I don't know because yeah, I. Yeah. We'll find out today. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Pleasure to meet you, man. All right. Who else we got out here? Oh, here we go. I almost did it again. I'll be like, all right, wait. Tell me your name. <laughs> Wade Olson. Uh, Where are you from? Grew up in Kansas, but lived in Atlanta for 20 plus years. Atlanta Metro. I don't live downtown, but then. All right. I uh, just bought the my Ultra Limited 2020, last the December of 2020, because mm -hmm. we were taking a big trip and always wanted one for long trips. Mm-hmm. So, but I've bought a Deuce in 2010. Then, you know, when I was younger, I had a sport bikes and dirt bikes as a kid and stuff. But I don't, I've been riding Harley since 2010, so about okay. 10, 12 years. And you said you're riding the Ultra today? Yeah, because that's okay. the one. I just had it. Probably my least one to balance. If I knew you were bringing this, I would have brought my Limited. That's fine. I, You know, I feel a lot more comfortable on Deuce because I rode it for 2010 to just this last year and okay it was a lighter bike so i want to more get a little more slow training with this and absolutely i'd probably rate myself maybe a three i don't okay know, i've gotten better when i first got on this it was learning all over again pretty mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. so see wade is all about efficiency every question i had he heard it it's not your first time watching the channel so he knows the questions he just Here's the answers, guy. Move on to the next person. Yep. All right. <laughs> you can pass the mic. <laughs> this is your buddy, right? Yeah. What's your name, sir? Jerry Petty. Jerry, where are you from? Hull, Georgia. And how long have you been riding the motorcycle? Four years. What are you riding today? Uh, 2019 Street Glide Special. All right, guys, I want you to look at Jerry's bike. Jerry's got this thing hooked up, too, and it sounds really good. He's got the two in the two. He's got Reinhardt's on it, and it sounds good. It's got a deep rumble. But it also still has the snap, crackle, and pop. You know, nothing crazy. What's these stickers on your headlight? Oh, it's a peach pass. Oh, okay, okay. He's got um, motorcycle drop guards. So Jerry's ready. Now, I want to show you guys this. He's got the one covering his primary. Protecting his primary cover, I should say. And, guys, you see these scuffs right here? So that happened when Jerry did not have saddlebag guards. And I didn't have to ask Jerry, I knew that. Why do I know that? Because that's what a saddlebag guard is for, is to protect your saddlebag. So, but the good thing is, he not only got the guards and used my video to uh, instruct him on how to put them on, but he also put motorcycle drop guards on them as well. So big ups to you, Jerry. Jerry, he, he ain't playing around, he means business. He changed the bars, he added, some hurt speakers to it. Just outstanding. Okay, let's get to the important stuff. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed skills? I'm gonna give it a one right now. Okay, one's good, that's good. Now, you guys know when you first pull up, I told them I was gonna stop saying this. I don't want you to feel pressure when you pull up here, but when people pull up, I watch them. It tells me so much of what I need to know. And Jerry already did his push up, so we, we got that out of the way. <laughs> All right, pass it on to, I'm not gonna say his name. What's your name, sir? Everybody calls me Finesse. Finesse, oh yeah. You hear, guys, I want you to rewind that. Everybody calls me Finesse. Everybody calls me Finesse. Everybody calls me Finesse. You hear how he said that? Everybody calls me Finesse. The way he said his name, it should be Finesse, right? That was perfect. <laughs> Where are you from? 
Uh, I'm originally from Texas, but I live here in uh, Pooler. Well, not Pooler, Guyton. Okay, good. So, uh, and um, how long have you been riding the motorcycle? Uh, I started around 2000. I took a break for a lot of years, mm -hmm. and I just picked up another bike about a month ago. Okay, good. Now, we see his shirt, so we know what kind of motorcycle he's most likely riding. What are you riding today? I have a 21 Indian Challenger Dark Horse. Okay, and I told uh, Oscar a couple of days ago, we uh, met these guys that were doing the Iron Butt Challenge. And I told him, I was walking up to his motorcycle, and I smelled the newness coming off of it. And it's nice. It's that nice. See, this kind of black is not going to show every bit of dirt because it's a matte black. It's a very nice-looking bike with the red. I like that. The red ring going around the tire. That's like a nice touch. Is that the only thing red on the bike? Yeah, the front and the back is the only thing that's red. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And on a scale of 1 to 10, hold up, I'm not finished looking at this. Very nice. And I, I just told him his engine looks like a toy. I <laughs> love the way that engine looks. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed skills? Uh, probably around a 3 right now. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. And last one, look at this guy. He's all the way over there. Let me get the mic. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Yeah, nice to meet you. Andy, why are you running from the mic? You know what's coming. <laughs> he said, come on, let's go all the way over there. Yep. What's your name, sir? Andy Schultz. Andy, where are you from? Asheville, North Carolina. And how long have you been riding the motorcycle, Andy? Seven years. Okay, and what are you riding today? The KTM 890 again. All right, KTM 890, guys. And Andy is good on this bike. You guys will see. He practices regularly. He's been out here before. This is the third time, I think. Yep, it's the here. third. And he let me ride this bike, too. So I already know this bike will show you what gear it's in with the clutch pulled in. Hey, Oscar, can I? Can your bike show me what gear it's in with the clutch pulled in? Yes. <laughs> and what bike is that? Uh, what was that? And what kind of bike is it again? Uh, Indian Challenger. Okay, thank you. No, that's, what I, that's what I want to know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best. How would you rate your slow speed skills? Six, seven. Six, seven, it's excellent. And look at, you know what's even more, I was about to say what's even more better. Oh, my God. You know what's even better? Look at the shirt that Andy is wearing. Outstanding. <laughs> All right, man. All right, guys. One through nine in the bonus today. Let's do it. All right, listen, there's no pressure out here. Zero pressure. You do exactly what you feel comfortable doing. Now, I do want you to step outside your comfort zone a little bit. All right? But. For instance, when we do the snowman, the snowman is three, actually it's four circles. That's the abominable snowman. The first one's 27 feet wide. If 27 feet wide is where you feel comfortable, there's no reason to go to the 21, the 25 feet, 22, or 18, okay? No pressure. All right, everybody cool with that? All right. Um, so we have one through nine today and a bonus. And again, the bonus is just a bonus. If nobody does it, I know Andy's going to do it. But if nobody else does it, that's fine. And then at the end of the day, we do a follow the leader. And I'll talk to you guys about that when we get to it. But if you've watched it, you know, that's always fun. I got a 360 camera, so I always catch somebody trying to be slick. All right. <laughs> um, all right. So the first thing we're going to be doing, guys, exercise number one, starting and stopping. Something that I never had initially because I assumed everybody knew how to do it. But that's just not the case. All right. So all I'm going to have you guys do. You're going to go down there. Be careful, there's dirt down there. And you're going to ride toward me. I'm going to be standing over here. And you're just going to come to a smooth stop. Now, do any of you guys come to a stop and as you're stopping, throw your motorcycle in neutral? No? Good. Because I know there's people out there that do that. L listen, stop doing that. Why don't we do that? A couple of reasons. One, we know that the only thing keeping this motorcycle up at slow speeds is what? Power to the rear wheel. So throwing our motorcycle in neutral, now we've eliminated that. So if something has to happen, we're screwed. We know our rear brake is used for control. Front brake is used for stopping, really, primarily. That rear brake is going to help you control the motorcycle. So keep the motorcycle, obviously, in gear. I want you to go up to second gear as you're coming towards me. Kick it down to first. Of course, you can stop initially on your front brake. At a certain point, Switch over to, now, me, I don't use my rear brake until I'm under 10 miles per hour. Anything above that, I'm using my front brake. Come to a smooth stop. Now, I always say left foot down. I have to emphasize, this is a motor officer, or particularly it's a highway patrol thing, right? Um, NYPD highway patrol, but they all, it's pretty much all the same. And that's because motor officers, it's more about looks than anything else, believe it or not. 
So if all of us are lined up, we ride two by two, if all of us have one foot down, that looks way better than if some of us are like that, some of us have two feet down. But it's also done that way because we're covering the rear brake all the time. Covering doesn't mean applying pressure. It means that if you need to get to it, you're already there. Because remember, everything we do on a motorcycle is subtle. If you do anything herky-jerky, it's going to react herky-jerky. So if your foot's off of your rear brake, and then you need it, and now you go to it, you're going to smash it. Whereas if it's already there, you can apply gentle pressure. Remember, everything is gentle. We're like ballet dancers out here. All right? Then, most importantly, when it's time for you to pull off, preload and keep it loaded. That's the part that's so important. People will preload, and then as soon as they let their clutch out, they let the preload down. So you'll hear your engine go down. I want you to concentrate on the sound of your engine today. So when you preload, when you get it to where you want it, concentrate on keeping it there. All right, so it's a lot of consistency today. When we get to turns, left head and eyes, consistently keep your head turned. Don't do this. And believe it or not, even when we're doing you riding toward me or doing the slow ride or doing trust and believe, your head and your eyes should be up, even with the, even with the horizon, okay? It helps with your balance, okay? Preload, keep it loaded, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. And as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, pick up that left foot. Or if you have two feet down, pick them both up. You shouldn't have two feet down, but... You know, again, the rules change depending on certain circumstances. I tell people all the time when they ask me questions, my answers are usually, it depends. It depends on what's going on. That's part of being the boss of your motorcycle, knowing what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. All right? Any questions? All right. Uh, Andy, you'll be first on everything since you're the veteran. <laughs> all right, guys. Exercise number one. You can park, you don't have to do it again. All right, now we got Wade here. Downshift. Excellent. Reload, reload. Now you hear when Wade pulls off, you hear a chug a lug. Preload's too low. Not a big deal when you're pulling off going in a straight line. Very nice. Reload. Good. We got Jerry. Bike sounds good. Excellent. Reload, reload, reload. You hear that chug a lug? Again, guys, we want to we practice, we play how we practice, so. You want to practice on making sure that preload's high all the time. High enough, I should say. All right, good. Preload, preload, preload. All right. I'm going to have him try one more time. His stop was fine. I'm talking about um, Wade here. The issue is that when they're taking off, the preload. All right, good. After this, you can park. Make sure you preload before you take off. Reload, reload, reload. I still want that higher. I'll talk to him about it. Very nice, nice and throaty. Excellent, excellent head and eyes. Give me more preload before you take you know off. What? You were in second gear. You were in second. <laughs> you were first gear now? Okay, you can park. Reload. There we go. All right, very good. Now you can park. Reload. Keep it loaded. Hey, much better. All right, let me talk to them. All right, good job, guys. Remember, we practice. I'm sorry. We play how we practice. So something that might not seem like a big deal Going straight can be a big deal if you're in a turn. So uh, Wade, Jerry, Oscar, the first time when you guys came through, the stop was beautiful. When it was time for you to leave, 
I hear your engine. When you watch this, when you know, I want you to listen to your engine. You hear it going, gluck, 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 gluck. it's too low. When you preload, I want that RPM up to close to 2,000 and then keep it there. That way when you take off, you don't have any worries. But not only that, you're, you're retraining your brain to hear your engine at that level. So when you go into a turn, you're already accustomed to doing that. You're not going to have any problems because, again, you get into a turn where you got a nice lean. Um, I tell people all the time, if I lean my motorcycle to the point where the boards are scraping, I can do that at 7 miles per hour, 6 miles per hour. But at that speed and at that lean, the only thing keeping it from falling is power. So you can't have any fluctuations at that point. All right. But that's extreme. None of that's necessary. I forgot to tell you guys that, too. The purpose of all of this is not to get you to ride like a motor officer or to be in a competition. It's just to raise your confidence so that you feel OK making right turns, left turns and U-turns. Simple stuff that everybody should know how to do on any type of vehicle. All right. I think we can all agree with that. All right. Step number two, and you guys are going to see that all of these exercises, are, I didn't just put these together haphazardly, they build on one another. Exercise number two is the slow ride. Now, this is a good one because, once again, you can practice this anywhere, actually in traffic. So when you're pulling up to a red light, if you see the light's red, the car is not moving, no reason to rush up to that car. Do the slow ride. Nice and easy, all right? You stay in the friction zone, or you can go in and out of the friction zone, really, if you have a little bit of momentum. I don't use that word often out here. Because we don't rely on momentum when we're doing U-turns and stuff. We rely on being in the friction zone, having power going to the rear wheel. All right? But if you're going in a straight line and you have a little bit of momentum, yeah, you can pull the clutch in, let it coast a little bit. If you start feeling, uh-oh, let it out a little bit, that'll help you. Use the rear brake if, it's got, if you're going a little bit too fast. You don't have to drag the rear brake, or you can drag the rear brake. Keep the clutch where it is. Keep the throttle where it is in the friction zone. And then let the rear brake control your speed. You can do either one. You're not doing it for three miles, so you'll be all right. right? And let's get this out of the way, too. A lot of people are, they're not thinking about this whole motorcycle thing logically. And what do I mean by that? I don't want to go out and practice and probably save my life or somebody else's life because I don't want to damage my motorcycle. I don't want to burn out my clutch. I don't want to wear out my rear brakes, which most motorcycle riders, the rear brake pads are brand new because they never use the rear brake. But that's because they didn't know the rear brake is actually going to help them control that motorcycle. OK, so let's get all of that. I'm going to call it stupidity at this point. Let's get all of that out because it doesn't make any sense if you think about it. All right. Learning how to ride this thing is going to make you enjoy it way more. All right. That's number one. Number two, your clutch, your motorcycles are designed to be operated in the friction zone. It's a wet clutch. All right. Now, we're not we have to do this intelligently, too. If it's 100 degrees outside and you're out practicing, you got to give the motorcycle some brakes, right? Not brakes, but, you know, brakes. And lastly, your rear brake pads. First of all, your rear brake pads and your clutch plates are maintenance items on your motorcycle, meaning they're not supposed to last forever, right? So are you going to not ride your motorcycle because your tires are going to wear out? No. So let's just think. I'm not talking to you guys, but I'm talking to Preloader Nation or anybody else that's watching. Go out and learn to ride your motorcycle. If the cost of that is at some point you're going to have to change the, the brake pads, that's the cost of doing business. You're going to have to change the brake pads in the front, the rear, tires, oil changes. It's maintenance. And if you're, not, if you're not willing to do the necessary maintenance on the motorcycle, just get rid of the motorcycle. Just drive a car. There's maintenance on that too, by the way. All right. So, slow ride. You guys, I'm going to be walking aside you. All right. However you want to stay at the speed, that's fine. You should not be able to ride in a straight line. If you can, you're going too fast. Purpose of this exercise is I want to get you accustomed to when you feel, uh-oh, putting your foot down is not the answer. You're already preloaded. Just open up the clutch a little bit. Now remember, we don't need a lot. Of, we don't need speed. We just need power. That's why sometimes you can see me standing still on the motorcycle with both feet up. And anytime I feel like it's going to fall, I just give it a little bit of power. Because power makes the motorcycle want to stand up. It makes it want to go straight. All right? We don't need speed. All right, we're clear? All right, any questions? Exercise number two. Head and eyes, Andy, head and eyes.
Andy's practicing for later. His head and his eyes are straight ahead. He's keeping the throttle loaded, not excessively high. It's not too low. It's perfect. Great job, Andy. Good park. Great job. Beautiful. That's exercise number one. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Good. Head and eye, straight ahead. Slow down, slow down. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Good job, you can park. Good job. Stop. Good. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. Good, good, good. Very good. Slow it down, slow it down. Head and eye straight ahead. Good job, Andrew. You can park. Excellent. Ready? All right, let's do it. Cover that rear brake. Always covering it. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. All right, good job, good park. Ready? Let's do it. Head and eye, straight ahead. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good today. All right, good job, you can park. Kicking my own cones. Outstanding, guys, outstanding. All right, good job. Oscar, now Oscar started with his foot off the brake, and then he took it, I told him to cover it, and then he took it back off the brake, and then he would go back to it when he needs it. Can you rest your foot on your rear brake without applying the rear brake? Because I know we have a, well, the rest of us have like a big pedal. You have like a little peg. Well, it's high up too. Yeah, like just like ours. So, so what I did notice that he did was he used like the tip of his toes, which is a good idea because you don't want to give too much rear brake. All right, but good job. Make sure you pay attention to that, that preload because at one point his throttle got really low. And again, not a big deal when you're going in a straight line. If you stall, usually, because sometimes you can stall and for some reason if the bike starts going, it's heavy and you don't catch it. You know, again, no big deal. All right. Question of the day. What does your shirt say? Trust. Trust and believe. Do you guys trust and believe that as long as you have power going to your rear wheel, everything's going to be okay? Yep. Let me, you know what? Wait, do you trust and believe that? I know. It's, I've never done it, so. I, mean, I know I, the, yeah. I, but do you trust the theory that as long as this, I, I'm glad he hesitated because Wade made this turn like this, like he was on a dirt bike, yeah. right? Um, yeah, yeah, and, that's, and, and I understand that. Did you used to ride dirt bikes? A little bit when I was a kid. Okay. So we want to make sure that we keep our feet on the boards or the pegs while the motorcycle is moving as much as possible because it's going to alleviate any chance of us being injured, number one. But number two, yeah, it's, it's definitely like it's a mental handicap for you. All right. Let's keep in mind that the biggest challenge for us out here today is not physical. It's all mental. This stuff is not rocket science. It really isn't. It's just overcoming bad habits, misconceptions, fear, right? Very hard to do, but at the same time, easy if you're consistent in to do it, taking the necessary steps to get over it. Jerry, do you trust and believe? I do. Okay. Andrew, do you trust and believe? Yep. Andy, I know you trust and believe. Science is there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you're a science guy, it makes it even easier. But the science is there. It's a gyroscopic machine. All right, Oscar, do you? Feels like a loaded question, but yes. Okay, good, <laughs> good. The next exercise is called trust and believe just for that. We're going to see if you really trust and believe. Now, I was happy that um, Wade hesitated.
because of what I just said to you with the feet stuff. And that's fine. But you can still see Wade's comfortable on his motorcycle. Also, when Wade's coming to a stop, he's got this foot out way before he stops. <laughs> now, that's not something that he's doing because he feels like he's going to fall. That's just a habit. I can see that because he's going at a speed where he doesn't even feel like he's going to fall. At the speed he's doing that, he could jump off the motorcycle and keep going. So, but again, no big deal. All right. Trust and believe is trust and believe. There's five steps in this exercise. Now, you're the, you're the veteran, so you got the most pressure. What's always step number one in everything we do out here? Make sure you're in first gear. That's right. Make sure you're in first gear. And I didn't follow my own rule once when I was demonstrating this. I was in second gear. And I picked up my foot. The motorcycle started to fall. I'm letting out the clutch. It's still falling. But, you know, I just had to not only let the clutch all the way out, I had to throttle it, too. Again, knowing what to do, depending on the situation. So step number one, make sure the motorcycle is in first gear. So for us Harley guys, we have to actually do this. For Oscar and for uh, Andy, they could just look down. I'm in first gear, right? Beautiful. Okay, what's step number two? Cover the rear brake. This is a it's, a, it's a box. So you start down here, make sure you're in first gear, then you go across. Cover the rear brake, and you come up here. Preload and keep it loaded. And come over here. Clutch right before the sweet spot. And we're not in the friction zone, we're right before it. And why are we right before it? Because step number five is pick up your left foot. Motorcycle's still not moving. And when you feel the motorcycle starting to fall, just open up your hand a little bit, you're gonna feel it pick itself back up. All right, that's trust and believe. Now again, we're not on the edge of a cliff, but people are terrified if they feel... <laughs> Nobody likes the feeling of falling, I get it. But like I said, you're gonna get more comfortable with it. You're always gonna not like that feeling but you just need to associate that, not this. I don't want you putting your foot out, right? This is not the answer. It's never the answer. I don't like to use that word never, but it's really, especially on the motorcycle, it's heavy. You know, all you're doing is setting yourself up for an injury, all right? I've had the motorcycle fall almost all the way down and just give it power. It's going to pick it right back up. Matter of fact, if the motorcycle is laying on the side, you could pick it up just by powering it. I've seen people do it. Right? I'm not going to do it because it's going to scuff the motorcycle, but or scuff the guards. All right, so let's do it. Remember, step number one is make sure it's in first gear. S step number two is cover the rear brake. Those two steps are always the case because I want to make sure I'm in control right from the start. And everything you do out here, I want you to be in control right from the start. And when people are bringing their motorcycle to a stop and they get that uneasy feeling, the reason they feel uneasy is because for that moment, they're not in control of the motorcycle. Nobody likes the feeling of being not in control of anything, really. So that's why we're covering the rear brake. That's why I can demonstrate this exercise right in front of you. And I'm not worried about, what if I run into them? I'm covering the rear brake. All right, so I'm covering the rear brake. I'm going to preload and keep it loaded. I don't need a lot of power. A little bit. Bring my clutch right before the sweet spot. All right, so if I let my foot off the brake, it's moving, all right. Now what I don't want to see is while you're sitting there, your motorcycle is going like this. That's because you're in the friction zone holding the rear brake. No, I don't want you in the friction zone and I don't want your motorcycle to move an inch, all right? Trust and believe. Also, once you pick up your foot, don't count the five Mississippi. As soon as you feel the motorcycle starting to fall, that's when you let the clutch out. I mean, as soon. But I need you, don't pick up your foot and just let it out. I need your body to feel it. Because if you feel it, that's, you know, that's what's going to make this happen. All right. That's, that's not somebody that's practicing, I don't think. Oh, no, I'm wrong. That's, that's the one that went on it, yeah. See how he's riding crooked? He got one eye open. <laughs> he got luggage on the back and everything. So he'll be a while. All right. First gear, cover the rear brake, preload, keep it loaded, clutch right before the sweet spot, pick up the foot. That quick. So if my motorcycle starts to fall to the right, the motorcycle is just going to go to the right. Woo wee! I got so many questions. Good morning. Let me do it from the side, so you can see it from the side.
First gear, cover the rear brake. Reload, keep it loaded. Push right for the sweet spot. Alright, it doesn't get any easier than that. Like I said, as soon as you feel it starting to fall. Now don't pop your clutch open. Now we're not trying, we had one guy here do a wheelie. You know, it was impressive too. Cause he wasn't on a small motorcycle. Now here's another thing I'll tell you guys. So remember, stuff that we're doing, we're doing them in, in, in small increments of time. And what I'm referring to is, if I'm ever doing something out here and I know I'm gonna do something where I'm, I'm leaning my motorcycle a lot, I might bring my RPMs up to 3,000 because it makes me feel more comfortable hearing all of that power available to me. I not, that way I know all I got to do is do this and it's there. So when you're doing this, if it makes you feel better to raise your RPMs, raise the RPMs because if they're low, you know, you might not feel too great about it. You ready, big guy? Look at this. You know where to pull right there. Ready when you are. Preload! Where's the preload? <laughs> He's showing off now. Okay. Yeah. All right, shut it off. He's f***ing with us. That's what I think. Because he's good on this thing, but for some reason, preload's messing with him. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, we'll do it again. Who's next? Isn't it? Nobody's eager. Nobody's bike is on. <laughs> Wade, you're first, Wade. We'll do it in that order. Oh, no, never mind. Okay. Shut that off. Okay, that's 10 push-ups. All right, so I'm, I'm, I noticed when you guys were doing exercise number two and I had you pull up and stop, that's me having you practice exercise number one, too. But what I'm also showing you guys is, I don't care if you're moving from here to here. We don't duck walk out here. We do the same thing we did before. Preload, keep it loaded, pick it up, blah, blah, blah. Now, when, when Andrew just rode up here, Andrew's got both his feet out, the motorcycle's all like this. And that's because he's not covering the rear brake. So he's starting out a little bit, not, not the best control. How about that? So let's make sure we do the same thing all the time. That's why we practice so it becomes muscle memory. So when you start, cover that rear brake. Preload, keep it loaded. You kept it together so you know what you're doing, right? Let me say this too, guys. At the end of the day, if you know what you're doing on your motorcycle, the rules don't have to be so strict. But when you're learning, you got to do things a certain way. And then it's like anything else. Then you can start taking shortcuts and crap like that, right? All right. Like, for instance, the front brake. Can you stop your motorcycle with the front brake? Then no problems? Of course you could. But we practice for uh-oh. And when uh-oh happens, if you don't have the muscle memory to know not to do that, you're going to do that. And then you're going to have a problem. Okay? All right. You ready? By the way, I saw you were in first gear. Beautiful. Okay, first gear. Cover the rear brake. Preload. Keep it loaded. All right, good. Good. Let it out. Let it out. Woo! See what I mean? His motorcycle started to go right. He gave us some more throttle. Ah, oh, she sounds good. Nice, nice. Does this motorcycle have a name? No. No, okay. All right, very good. Right before the sweet spot, good. Keep it loaded. Head and eye, straight up. Let it out, let it out. Nice. All right, whatever movie's playing here, don't watch yeah. it. Straight ahead. Look at my camera. It's okay, it's okay. I'm going to ask you about this later. How'd you get that to be white? 
Oh, okay. I think that's during the daytime, doesn't it? Not for mine. Maybe it's the setting. All right. Good, good. Don't move. Good, good, good. There we go. All right, all right. First gear, pretty low, keep it low. Oh, yeah, you already know you're in first gear. It's right there. <laughs> Head and eyes, look at my camera and keep looking at it. Don't move. Pretty low, pretty low, pretty low. You know how low his throttle was? One more time. Tim, you getting in here? All right, come on in. You practiced this before? I've tried it just, but I, I, I want to roll before I let it fall. Of course you do. I, 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 I can move it slow. Yeah. But I just don't trust my other tap foot. I, I just, yeah. There's the key word. You don't trust. This is trust and believe. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Just make sure that preload is up. Okay, good. Keep it right there. Try it again. Looking good, Andy. All right, trust and believe, man. Trust and believe. It's science, man. I know. <laughs> oh, up the back of that motorcycle is moving down. Get out of the friction zone. Let it out. Let it out. I wasn't in the friction zone. No, no, I saw, I saw it moving down. But then again, it was probably your weight when you pick up your foot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I see it now. Okay. Those are so shocks. I tell you what, the point problem is there's no. I need more preload. There's barely any preload. Yeah, you need at least 2,500 on this bike. Yeah, I should hear it. Let it out, let it out. Ah. There we go, there we go. All right. Ready? Reload. Nice. Very nice. All right, Andrew's looking good. Okay, so the whole time in that turn, the whole turn, you're looking here. Why? Who knows? Everybody does it. Head and eyes. Just keep your eyes on my camera. All right, let's do it again. You're looking down. Look at my camera. Keep it loaded. Pick up that foot. Let it out. Nice. Oh. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. All right. I keep seeing the eyes go down here. I don't know why. For my first gear. <laughs> Good luck. Nice. All right, nice stop, very nice. Keep your eyes on my camera. Preload. Good, keep it right there. Andy! All right, trust and believe. Head and eyes, look at my camera. Not bad. We're going to move on to exercise number four, guys. Right turns and left turns from a stop. They're looking good. All right, guys, very good. Andrew, actually, that was very good. Excellent. Um, now, you, did you notice that I, your preload was up, and then as soon as you started to move, if you didn't notice, you can, when you watch the video, as soon as you started to move, brrr, and that's the time when it's most important. Again, we play how we practice. If you get in the habit of doing it incorrectly, again, going in a straight line, not a big deal. Going to make a turn and you do that, that's when it happens. And that's when it happens. Guys, this is exercise number four. Right turns, left turns from a stop. People think about these big motorcycles. And again, you, we don't use the word heavy out here. Because the, the weight of your motorcycle is irrelevant. And if you focus on it, 
you're just going to be mind screwing yourself, right? Okay, and your height doesn't matter. Nothing matters, all right, once it's moving. I understand when it stops, some people are vertically challenged or whatever. But you would think that with the head, well, I almost said the word. You would think with, <laughs> <laughs> you would think with the size of the motorcycle or whatever that the biggest problem would be exercises where we have to lean. But this has the highest failure rate, it's simply just making a right or a left turn. This is why exercise number one, two, and three, in my opinion, are the most important. Because once you get that down, everything else becomes easier, right? So exercise number three, I had you guys pick up your foot with the motorcycle not moving, and then just let the clutch out, right? This exercise, we're not doing that, all right? That's just a practice exercise to get you to trust and believe. This exercise, you're going to pick up your foot once you feel it starting to move. But because you're doing it from a standstill, you're going to almost feel like you did in exercise number three. But if you trust and believe that as soon as you give power to the rear wheel, you're fine, you understand you don't need speed to make this turn. You just need power to the rear wheel, all right? Power keeps the motorcycle up, not speed. Speed is counterproductive for most of the stuff we do out here, especially this. Why do I say that? Most motorcycle riders are very uncomfortable between 1 and 10 miles per hour. So their answer is either take their motorcycle for a walk or implement speed. So a burst of speed will get me out of that range quicker. That's not going to help you here. So when people feel uh-oh here and they're not preloaders, they introduce speed. And that's why you'll see them go like this. Because speed also makes your handlebars go like this. Remember, your motorcycle always wants to go straight with speed. So... When I say turn your handlebars, that's not going to happen if you got a lot of speed. Or they'll turn their handlebars, and if they feel, uh-oh, about right here, speed. And then they take out these cones. All right? So this exercise has eight steps. What's the first step, Jerry? What's always the first step? Make sure it's in first gear. That's right. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. Step number two, we're going to cover the rear brake, especially here, because we want to make sure we're in control before we start. Step number three, preload and keep it loaded. So important. Because when people don't keep it loaded here, it happens all the time. They turn the handlebars, forget about the load. Because the handlebars are turned, it's going to fall, most likely. Not all the time. Step number four, clutch right before the sweet spot. Okay? Not as important as it was in exercise number three, but we practice. We play how we practice. Step number five, head and eyes. I don't know what movie you guys are watching on the infotainment screen on your motorcycles, but... Almost every, almost every one of you guys are like this. <laughs> um, Wade said he's looking for first gear. I told him, good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> You're not going to find it on that Harley. Okay? So head and eyes. The guy I was doing a private lesson would say, I don't know what to look at. I don't care what you look at. Focus on something. Just don't look down. Don't look at my cones. Please, guys, I know you've heard me say this. See how small these cones are? All right, it's, 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 it's inappropriate for you to stare at my cones. They, they, they're, they're underage, all right? So head and eyes, all right? That's step number five. Step number six, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. Remember, you're on that rear brake at the same time. Step number seven, as soon as you feel the motorcycle starting to move, pick up your foot. Well, if you got two feet down, which you shouldn't, because step number six said you're covering the rear brake. As soon as you feel it, pick up your foot. It's going to be all right. We already know that. And then step number eight, turn the handlebars, okay? That's this exercise in a nutshell. Now, this is seven and a half feet wide, right? This is plenty of space. I want you guys to understand, none of us are pulling a trailer. So you don't need to be all the way over here to make a left turn, all right? But what I want to tell you is, again, this is not a competition. So if you feel more comfortable coming over here, come over here. If you feel more comfortable stopping back there instead of up here, do that. But the more you practice this, you're going to understand, I don't need to be all the way back here. I don't need to be right here. And the video I did showing why I don't want you to lean in this exercise, the reason we practice these things is because when those situations come up, it shouldn't be an oh crap moment for you. It should just be, okay, here's what I got to do, and I'm going to do it, right? So if there's something you have to look around like what I had to do, now you can't stop back here. You pull up here, you're looking around this car, now you got to make this turn, and you just make it, okay? All right, we know that three things determine the radius of our turn. Speed, how much you lean the motorcycle, and how much you turn the handlebars. Again, I don't want you to lean here. 
Now, the first time you guys go through here, I want you to go straight through. I don't want you to stop because that's the easier way of doing it because you still have momentum to help you out. And I'll see people come through here and lean, clip this cone. I want you to imagine these cones are poles. If your saddlebag goes over it, you hit it. So come out wide enough so that you can make this turn. Now, what makes that easier is if you do it straight up. All right? Keep your head and your eyes up. Keep that preload going, and you'll be fine. Any questions? All right, so the first time you guys go through, like I said, just go through, and we're going to keep doing I'm going to put the camera on that side so when you watch this at home, you can watch yourself making this turn. I used to keep it like this, but it's better like that. And then when we go that way, I'll put the camera over there. Go straight through. And again, guys, the goal is when you make this turn, your goal is to be as close to the center of this lane as possible. Why do I say that? I want you to imagine this is a double yellow line. And when we did the tail of the dragon and pulled out that parking lot and I watched my video, half the people I was riding with, well over the double yellow line. I mean, just not even close, right? And if you make it, if you're just making it, your handlebars for the most part are probably over the double yellow line. So this is your goal, all right? If you don't reach that goal right away, that's fine. Remember, speed is always gonna take away space. So if you see you're not making it, either you're going too fast or you're not turning your handlebars enough. It's one of the two. Have all you guys seen my video on turning the handlebars, the misconception of it? Okay, a lot of people have a fear of turning the handlebars, especially locking them. Now, preloaders, I talk about this all the time. Most people buy handlebars just because they look nice. And the reason they don't have to worry about anything else is all they do is ride straight and make slight turns. And if they're going to make a turn going slow, they're walking anyway. Not a big deal. Once you actually learn how to ride one of these machines and you see, if I can't turn my handlebars all the way to the right and reach my clutch comfortably, these handlebars are not for me. All right. So that's what we're going to be dealing with here, too. All right. Uh, let me run through it. First time, like I said, straight through. Then I'm going to have you guys come to a stop. Make a left and then we're going to do the right. And then lastly, I'm going to have you guys come through here. I want you to come through it like a good clip of speed. And then I want you to come to a stop. All right. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to have you come to a stop and make a turn. Then I'm going to have you come to a stop, make a turn and stop. And the reason I had to add that is because people would make this turn. And when they felt, uh oh, this blast the speed, and take out these cones. You need to be able to be in control all of the time. So you should be able to make a turn. But remember, when you're going to make a turn, I noticed that you did that, Andrew, when you came around. You made the turn and then you, you hit the brakes quick. Don't stop your motorcycle with the handlebars turned. You got to straighten the handlebars out. All right, it's going to make everything easier. And lastly, when you go through, I want you to go through with a, a good amount of speed and then stop. I added that because people that start to turn their motorcycle see something and panic, drop the bike, and then, then they're cursing out the other person. When really it's just their, their lack of knowledge in riding the motorcycle. That's why the motorcycle fell. fell. You have to know how to, I did another video on bringing your motorcycle to a smooth stop. People struggle with that. How do you do that? Sometimes momentum is going to all work out. Balance is just work out perfectly. And you could just stop. Other times, you're going to feel that uh-oh feeling. And when you feel that, the answer to uh-oh is the friction zone. Go back into the friction zone, preload, preload. 30% power, 70% rear brake, because you're still trying to stop. That's the same thing you do in a situation where you're leaned and you go, uh-oh. Power, rear brake, rear brake, stop. All right, that's enough talking. First time, straight through. Now, I'm going to exaggerate going through slow. You don't have to go that slow. First gear, cover the rear brake, blah, blah, blah. Now once I get into that turn and I see I'm good, now I can come off my rear brake. But I'm dragging my rear brake through that whole turn because I want to be controlled the whole way. Second time, stop. Now, first gear, cover the rear brake, preload, keep it loaded, clutch right before the sweet spot, head and eyes, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. As soon as it starts to move, pick up your foot, rear brake, head and handlebars. I want you to do it, come to a stop.
Any questions? Head and eyes, Andy, head and eyes. Good, good. All right, you're working it out, working it out. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes, head and eyes, head and eyes. Everybody's looking down. Head and eyes, look at my camera. Keep looking at it, look at the camera. Don't worry about it, first time. Look at my camera, keep looking at it. You're looking at my cones, you're molesting them. Head and eyes, look at my camera. Good, good. Do it again, straight through. Go straight through, yeah. Because your eyes, look at my camera, keep looking at it. Keep looking, stop looking at my cones. <laughs> good, good. Look at my camera, look at my camera. It's all right, it's all right. I see he's popping his clutch. You know, anything you do herky-jerky, it's gonna react herky-jerky, it doesn't feel good. Straight through, yeah. So he introduced speed and he pushed them out wide. Stop looking at the cones, buddy. Stop looking at the cones. Straight through. Head and eyes. Look at my camera. Keep looking at it. You're still looking at my cones. I see you. <laughs> Go straight through. Yeah. Straight through, Andy. Straight through. So Jerry's trying to use his body to turn the motorcycle. Got to turn the handlebars. Good. Head and eyes. Look up. You're looking down, too. Look at my camera. All right. You keep molesting my cones. I see it. <laughs> All right. We got Tim, Papa D, off the camera doing some push-ups. Discipline preloader. Straight through. Straight through. Excellent. Head and eyes, look at my camera. All right, let me see if, let me see if those handlebars are too wide for him. Okay. I already see what's going on with uh, Oscar. His foot's not on the rear brake. That happens. All right, I'm following the police report on all of y'all. Everybody's molesting my cones with their eyes. <laughs> and Wade is the worst because he's the sneakiest. Like, he's just doing the eyes like this. <laughs> all right. Um, good job. Oscar, what are you thinking you're doing wrong? I'm going to tell you exactly what the issue is. Your foot is not on the rear brake. So right there, you're not able to control your speed. When you can't control your speed in here, it's never gonna feel good. It's never gonna make you wanna turn the handlebars because you, the motorcycle just wants to go straight. So next time you do that, we're gonna, you're gonna use the rear brake, trust me. Very easy. Um, Jerry, one time you went through, remember we said if you do anything herky-jerky, it's gonna react that way? You kinda popped your clutch. So it went like this. You still handled it, but it almost seems like you're trying to will your motorcycle to turn. Let me do me a favor. Turn your handlebars all the way to the right. Reach, to grab your clutch. Are you comfortable? You sure? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so when you get in here, you're going at a good speed, so that's not an issue at all. But it looks like you're fighting it. If you got to scoot up on your seat so you can actually really turn, you know, do that. Or if you want to get to the right of the lane so you don't have to turn as much, try that too. We'll see. Like I said, not a competition. All right, this time, if you want to go through one more time, fine. If you want to go to the next step, which is stop and turn, you can do that. Go ahead, man. I'm looking at your eyes. Inappropriate.
Nice. Speed. Speed. So he felt uh-oh and implemented speed. And that's what took him out wide. Head and eyes. Look at my camera. You're looking at my cones. Look at my camera. Good. Look at the camera. Keep looking at it. Keep looking at it. It's getting better. It's getting better. He's got to turn the handlebars. All right. There we go, there we go, looking good. You gotta come to a stop here. Stop, stop. So the last time you made this turn, your eyes were like this. You didn't look that way until you were here. Something's coming, it's too late. Remember, head and eyes, handlebars. Head and eyes, all right. You're molesting my cones. Perfect. Looks good, man. Looks really good. All right. Yep. If you want to. Reload. There we go. I know, it's tough. Is it okay to turn the handlebars before we start? But see, that depends. Because sometimes turning them too early will make you hit the inside cone. As long as you can clear that with your bags, fine. Let's see what you got. Head and eyes, though. Head and eyes. Good, good. All right. Reload, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. There we go, getting better, baby. All right, Tim. So now remember, when you pick up your foot, Sometimes people pick up their foot fast and it throws them this way. Yeah. Nice and easy. You're looking good, Wade. You're looking good. You're looking good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. All right. All right. Actually, remember, guys, we're just warming up. We just got here, but I already see improvements. All right. You're looking better. Just by using that rear brake, now you're not outside the cones. You, you, you just actually, you didn't even clip a cone right there. Turn your handlebars a little bit more, but it's amazing, the speed. That's what you did last time. You said, uh-oh, speed. Remember, you don't, need to, you don't need speed, you just need power. Trust and believe it's gonna be okay. Looking really good. All right, um, all right, so this time, if you wanna go through, you wanna go through, now I want you to go through with some speed and then bring it up and stop right there, okay? 
The rest of you guys, do whatever you feel most comfortable. If you just want to stop and go through, fine. I noticed you stopped a little bit earlier. Like I said, if you need to do that, if you want to do that too, that's fine. But uh, listen, I know that that first feeling feels like, oh, crap, right? And that's what you guys, some of you are struggling with. Trust me. Put Preload that throttle and keep it loaded. Open up, go into the friction zone, and you're going to be fine. What I don't want you to do is put your foot down. I don't care if you hit the cones. Don't, I don't want you staring at them, but you can hit them. They're fine with that, all right? <laughs> I'd rather you hit the cone than put your foot down. Now, one time, Andy, Andy went like this. I love seeing that because he's fighting an instinct and winning that battle, all right? Don't put your foot down, all right? Just go through the cones. I don't care. All right, let's go. You all right, man? Trying to catch that bike. Of course you do. I was surprised to see you. I, I told him, I said, if I he makes it. Email, like, I'm gonna try to make it. Oh, I didn't. But I'm, I'm gonna stay for a little bit. I think I'm gonna try to head toward the house. I got okay. to turn around today. I hear you, man. There you go, come on, come on. Head and eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Head and eyes, you're looking down. Okay, so what's starting that is right from the start. You're like this. You gotta look over here. It happens. Whatever you wanna do, we get ready to go right in a second. I don't know. Stop looking at my coat. You're looking down. You're looking down at my cones. You look down, you're going to go down. There we go. There we go. Nice. Turn, turn, turn. There we go. There we go. Very good. Make sure when you come to a stop, your handlebars are straight. You're coming to a stop with them still slightly turned. All right? He's good, but his head is buried. They don't want to turn. I know they don't want to turn. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Everything looks good, man. The head and the eyes, the body. Preload, preload, preload. All right, good, good. Head and eyes. Turn those handlebars. Speed, speed, speed. Now I got it. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, keep it turned. Good, good. Stop looking at my cones. Oh, look at that turn. That was beautiful. Head and eyes, look at my camera. Nice, Andrew. Stop looking at my cones. <laughs> nice. Turn the handlebars, turn them, turn them. Nice.
Terry tried to take me out. And not to dinner. Try to take me out. Like butter, baby. Like butter. Remember, head and eyes, turn those handlebars, keep your speed down, you'll be fine. Don't worry about that, it happens. Good, turn them, turn them, turn them, turn them. Try it again. Throttle, throttle, throttle. His preload went down. I thought he was going to go down. Nice. Nice. Head and eyes, Andrew. Head and eyes. Yeah. Andrew's good. He's constantly staring at my cones, though. His head is buried. Turn him, turn him, turn him, turn him. So I want to see something because when he's turning those handlebars, it looks like his the inside of his elbow is going into the side of his body. Hey Oscar, turn your handlebars. It looks like when you're turning, do you feel like it's difficult? To, well, I, it's it's kind of hitting your body, right? All right, because um, yeah, you would definitely benefit from some some different handlebars. But it, I'm by no means am I saying this should be preventing you from doing this though. You just have to. You just have to turn them. All right, um, Andy. You can just keep going, doing what you want to do. When you guys come through, come to a stop. If you feel more comfortable, um, just going through without stopping, do that. Um, Andrew, there's no doubt about. Andrew's an example of when I tell people, head and eyes is not vital for you to make a turn, because all day he's down. His 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 head's buried, right? It makes more of a difference when you're doing real tight stuff, right? So. This is fine, but I do want you to practice keeping your head up because it's not just about turning the handlebars. It's also about seeing what's going on where you're going, and particularly when we get to U-turns. If you don't turn your head and look, like why would we commit to a turn before we know what's going on, right? And stuff happens fast out there. You might look or look in your mirror and everything's fine, and the second you look away, something's coming and you don't see it because your head's buried. So that's why we want to get into the habit, head and eyes, all right? All right, man. Nice. Look at my camera. Very nice. Too much speed. Too much speed. See, speed makes you feel comfortable. And right now, Jerry is not comfortable at all on this turn. Head and eyes. You've been less than my cones with your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now the only reason he didn't make that turn is he, he started to turn too early. So he made that more difficult. I'll let him know when he comes back around. Very nice, man. You're looking good. Looking good. All right, Andy, after this. Go to the serpentine, single serpentine, number five. Yeah. Expect to be contacted by the police. What? Expect to be contacted by the police. Okay. For molesting my cones with your eyes. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Nice. 
Okay, the only reason you didn't make that last turn, you came into that turn like this. So if you come like that, now you got to turn the handlebars even more to make this. If you stay over here and then turn, you don't have to turn as much. So let's try that. Where you are, stay there. Don't turn until about right here. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. Look, you're looking down. You're looking down. Look at my camera. All right, after this, after this, go over there where, where, um, where Andy is, the single serpentine, yeah. Head and eyes, look up, Jerry, look at the camera, look at the camera, look at the camera. Jerry said, screw you. What's going on in my dashboard is way more interesting than your camera. <laughs> nice and easy, head and eyes, keep looking at the camera. Turn the handlebars, turn them, turn them, turn them. Good, good, good. All right, and that's just the result of keeping it loaded. All right, go over to exercise number five, single serpentine. Jerry's coming for one more time. Keep looking at that camera. Turn the handlebars. Turn the handlebars. All right. Exercise number five, guys. Single serpentine. Starting to get so you can see why. Out of everything out here, I spend the most time on exercise number four because it's something, it's a humbling exercise, something that seems so simplistic, it challenges your uh, skills. So that's why that has eight exercises, that, that, that uh, eight steps in that exercise. But it's important that you know, I only put steps on it because when you're not really sure how to do something, your brain will just race. But if you just follow steps, as you get better and better at it, those steps will disappear because you'll just know. I just got to do it and you just do it like everything else. All right. So, but, it, but listen, good job guys. Please remember to keep practicing that because something like that is so important in parking lots. I'm not talking about practicing, but you go to the mall or something, you're in the parking lot, a gas station, stuff like that is just so easy to do when you know you can do it here. Okay. All right. Moving on. Single serpentine. Oh, what I do want to share with you guys too. I told um, Tim this because I noticed that he did it and people do it. Sometimes when you're making a left turn from a stop, you're so nervous and tense, you start feeling herky-jerky. So when you pick your foot up, you pick it up like this. And because you pick it up like that, what am I doing? You're pushing the motorcycle to the right, and that's throwing off your balance. When really, remember, we're not doing exercise number three. When you feel a motorcycle starting to move, that's when you know, okay, it's good. You pick up your foot nice and easy. And every time you guys were coming up to stop to make the turn, you were doing exercise number one. You all look good. Wait, you're looking really good, like the body positioning, your head and eyes. And you'll see when you watch the video. That's why it's important to record this stuff so you guys can go back and see what you're doing. Andrew, he just, you know, he's killing my cones with his eyes. Jerry, the last time Jerry went through, I was in his face going, head and eyes, look at... And he said, screw you. I'm looking right here. I love what's going on here. <laughs> but he came back through, and this time, this time he, he was looking where he was going, but... Speed, speed, all right? So, all right, speaking of speed, no, we're never speaking of speed. We don't want speed. This is exercise number five, the single serpentine. Something that years ago, I thought it was just something to do because it was fun. But really, this is relevant. You need to be able to maneuver your motorcycle at medium speeds, making evasive maneuvers. That's what you need to be able to do. Because here, you're turning the handlebars. We know that when we're riding at speed, we turn by pushing the handlebars. So we're not, obviously that's not the case here. So I want you to dip and dive this motorcycle, all right? I want you to go out wide, don't hug the cones. People will come and do this, clipping every cone or going right over it with their saddlebag. I want you to go, these cones are 15 feet apart, so there's plenty of room. And you see there's a line here and a line there. You don't have to go all the way to the line, but I want you to go out wide. I want you to be close to this cone, because if you're close to this cone, it's just going to get tighter as you go up. It's not impossible. You just got to lean more. I want you to work smarter, not harder. Remember, we're in the friction zone, okay? If you want to go in and out, that's fine. Uh, me, I prefer to stay in the friction zone. I want it to be smooth. Everything I do in the motorcycle, I want it to be fluid. And if you're doing a bunch of stuff, you're just increasing the odds that it's going to be doing stuff like this. Head and eyes. You guys are going to be coming this way, by the way. 
I want you to look at my camera. I used to tell people to look at me, but for some reason people don't want to look at me. So look at the camera, right? And I want you to look at it the whole time. There's no reason for you guys to look at my cones. No reason at all. Straight, your peripheral vision will pick them up. Dip and dive that motorcycle, all right? Manipulate it. Show it who's the boss, okay? Any questions? I'll run through it. And again, don't go fast. Speed is going to make you... Speed does two things. We already know it takes away space, but it also forces you to have to make decisions quicker. Putting yourself in undue, unnecessary added pressure or stress or whatever. Now, as I'm going down the first time, it's above the brake. I'm, I'm covering the brake, not using it. But if I see, uh oh, I went a little. I'm going a little too fast now. A little bit of pressure. That's all I need. And then I come back off of it. If you want to drag it the whole way, that's fine too. Whatever you have to do to control your motorcycle, do it. All right? I heard another content creator. I'm not going to mention his name, but he keeps using the word crutch or cheating, which is ridiculous. If you need to use your rear brake to control your motorcycle, use the rear brake to control your motorcycle. This is not a competition. All right, this whole thing of, oh, don't use the rear brake at all. You, listen, if that's how you have to do it starting out, if you ride your motorcycle like the rest of your life, but you can make a U-turn right here, and most of the motorcycle community cannot, do what you gotta do, all right? Authority of me. Oh, shit. Did not see the cone. All right, now hold up. This is a perfect example. A perfect opportunity, let me make sure the camera got this. So that was an, that was a, that was an example of me trying to, trying to keep it loaded. It wasn't going to happen because I hit my cone. And if now if I were to hit this cone and I just hit it normally, fine. But I decided I'm going to do an extreme left turn. I leaned all the way over. So now, if you got that much weight on the side of the motorcycle, yeah, this is going to make a difference. So... Now we're going to go over what I was talking to you guys about before. Let me turn the motorcycle. Another way to pick up your motorcycle. Right? All right. Now we see everybody do this. This takes a lot of energy. And also, it helps if you have saddlebag guards. This way to me is so much easier. I mean, so much easier. Right hand on the left grip. Left hand on the right grip. So I'm going to be pushing with this hand. Pulling up with this hand and at the same time I'm walking into the motorcycle doing all three together now not like this that's how I, was, I remember I did it like that before you have to be close to the motorcycle because this is not going to work all right and count to three again pull push now these handlebars are kind of wide so they don't allow me to get as close as I'd like to so I'll put this foot right here one two three nice and easy Oh, I see it. All right. There we go. All right, now that's a that's a that's a decent scuff, right? See my saddlebag? See any scratches? No. That's why you need guards. You need guards. And and, and yes, I don't have any motorcycle drop guards yet. However, the damage is on the underside of my engine guard. Just like it's on the underside of my saddlebag guard. So all of the worry about, I don't want it to be, it's not going to be ugly. All right? It's not ugly. All right? All right. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason, guys. Guys, when my motorcycle, when I felt my motorcycle falling, I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, what the hell? What's under my wheel? One of my cones. <laughs> nice and smooth. Head and eyes. Going out nice and wide. Nice, Andy. See, this is he's going a little fast here, but he's good. 
Very nice, Andrew. Very nice. All right, I want you to go out wider because your, your, your pipes, they right over the cones. All right, he's going to do that over. All right, Jerry, too much speed. All right, he picked it up. It's only the first time through. He's very stiff, like he's fighting that motorcycle. Loosen up, man, loosen up. It's all right. All right, Andrew helping us out. And guys, I don't know if you noticed that when my phone, I don't know if the camera picked it up. I hope it did. When I felt my motorcycle going out and I felt like preloading wasn't going to help because it was going out. Um, not preloading. Keeping the throttle open. Well, same thing. <laughs> when I saw I had to put my foot out, I put it way out. I don't want that saddlebag catching it. Very good, Andy. Very good. All right, Wade is molesting every cone. You're looking at every cone, Wade, every cone. Look at me right here. Look at me. All right, Jerry. Not bad, not bad. What do you think is the problem? Are you covering that rear brake? That's it. Too much. Trust me, it makes a huge difference. Try it again with that rear brake. I'm telling you guys, this is something that it seems like it should be so easy. Sometimes it could be something as, as simple as I'm not using that rear brake. I'm going a little too fast. And that's why he's passing a set of the cones. You know, too much speed. Speed is not your friend out here. Nice, Jerry. It's getting smoother and smoother. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so now here comes Oscar. All right, it's looking better. Now stop molesting my cones and do it again. Straight at the camera. There we go. Very good. Andrew's looking very good. Wade molesting my cones again. I'm looking right at him. He's looking right at every cone. <laughs> there you go. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. I heard his throttle go down, but he picked it up. That's good. Oh, no, no. There's a black dot on the floor, you'll see. A black dot on the ground, I mean. Good. Now remember, I don't want you, I don't want you idling through here. At some point you're using momentum. Keep it loaded. Listen to that engine. But much better already. This is like the Andy show. Much better, Jerry. It's already smoothing out. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Wade is so hard on himself. He keeps shaking his head. He's doing fine. Go out wide. Come oh, all right, all right, all right. Try one more time. Swing out a little wider. Keep it loaded. This is like the Andy show today. Outstanding. And it looks good on that motorcycle too. It reminds me of uh, Dave Otega's motorcycle. Dave Otega, the VI preloaded too. Nice! Andy's having a ball of it on oh, that KTM. 
Keep it loaded. Ah, too much. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Tim Marshburn. Tim, yes, are you also known as Papa D? I am known as Papa D. My son, my older son, my youngest son called me that. I'll get that right in a minute. Don't you have a YouTube channel? Yes, sir. Papa D Rides. Papa D Rides? Yes, sir. All right, check out Papa D Rides. How long have you been riding a motorcycle? Uh, since I was about 13 years old, and then when I was a young adult, I got rid of the bike while my kids were growing up, mm -hmm. and I've been back riding for about 14 years now. What are you riding today? I ride a Harley Davidson Road Glide, limited. Right, check it out. I actually named her on the ride yesterday. I've been trying to think of a name. Oh, really? I asked the guys on my channel, and they gave me all different names. One was like Zombie. It's Zephyr Blue. Uh-huh. But we were at the halfway mark yesterday, and me and Woods started talking about it. He threw out Passion. So I think Passion's going to stick because okay. I have a passion for motorcycles, and it's kind of like Passion Purple. It's, it's Zephyr Blue, but it's got purple hues to it, and I like that. Very nice. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your slow speed skills? So 3 or 3.5. I used to think it was a little bit better, but... Since I got this bike, I put these bars on it, uh -huh. um, and they're just a little too wide. And plus, I changed the seat, so both of those things affected yeah, yeah. how I can handle the bike. So I used to be more comfortable turning left or right. I've always wigged out about doing U-turns. Yeah. But so a three, maybe a three and a half, and I'm actually probably going to have to change the bars again to get them in a little bit closer so I can actually reach it at full lock. Because exactly. when I'm at full lock, it's either too tight or too far, and I just can't get there. And guys, I'm going to be doing the video. It's funny that uh, Tim should mention that. I'm going to be doing the video on making sure that your motorcycle is comfortable so that you can operate it properly. And, and coincidentally, we're going to the U-turn next. So, hey, uh, Tim, U-turn. I mean, Andy, U-turn. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Thank you, I'll man. I'll down here, man. I promise that. Uh, I appreciate it, man. I, I just thought, man, I knocked out two stones. Go right ahead. I love a disciplined preloader. In this case, a disciplined VI preloader. All right, guys, Tim just said, he's leaving now, but he just said, this is his Achilles heel, U-turns. But I'm here to tell you, based on everything that we did leading up to this, it makes this so much easier. Preloading the throttle and keeping it loaded, watching your speed, head and eyes, which a lot of you are just refusing. In this single serpentine, Wade said, screw you. I'm going to look at every cone. And he was, <laughs> he named them as he was going down. <laughs> oh, see, he's doing it backwards. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so preload the throttle, keep it loaded. You're going to hear, when I walk, when I ride in here, my, my throttle's already preloaded because I know I'm getting ready to do something. And it stays the same throughout the turn, okay? So what I want you guys to do is when you come in here, now some people make a U-turn and they just... Go right into the turn. Some people do a momentum swing. Whatever you want to do. Um, Andrew, what are we turning first? Our head and our eyes or our handlebars? Head and eyes. Yeah, see, he knows what to do. He just don't do it. Okay. <laughs> head and eyes. Handlebars. Now, when you turn your handlebars, turn them keep them consistently turned. I'm not talking about if you only have them turned slightly because then it's not enough. Turn them. Head and eyes, look at my camera. Keep looking at it. Don't look down, up, down, up. You don't need a lot of speed in here. You don't need a lot of lean. You don't need a lot of handlebar turn. This is 27 feet wide. Is this too wide for anybody? Anybody offended by this? Should it be, you know what I mean? If you want to challenge yourself, which I'm sure Andy's going to do, this box is 18 feet. So if you want to do that, just don't pass this line. And you can make the U-turn right in here. Or pass the line and make it. It doesn't matter. This is not a competition. Left U-turns, right U-turns, same thing. First time you guys come through, left U-turn, left U-turn. When I tell you, then you're going to come to a stop and then make a U-turn. And then lastly, you're going to come to a stop, make a U-turn, and stop. And then we'll do the same thing going right. Any questions? 
I'm gonna start expediting stuff now because I don't know what the hell's going on with this weather. So let me run through it really quick. Listen to my engine. It stays the same the whole time. Now, Jerry is having some type of dispute with his motorcycle. You can tell. Because they're having a, he's fighting it. He's fighting it. But he's still doing well, so. I'm gonna have you stop, make a U-turn, head and eyes. And then last, you're gonna stop, U-turn, stop. All right? Head and eyes the whole time. Now you notice, my throttle is the same whether I'm doing it in 27 feet or 18 feet. Because again, I want to get into your mind. You don't need a lot of speed. You just need power to keep this motorcycle up. All right? So again, at an extreme lean, like I said before. Going about seven miles per hour. Now again, I'm not asking anybody to do anything that extreme because it's not necessary, but I'm only doing it to, to make a point. We're talking about 27 feet, you barely have to lean. In fact, I did a video proving you don't need to lean at all to make a U-turn at 27 feet, okay? But I want you to try to incorporate some lean. Now lean doesn't mean I want you to coast through it, all right? So some people do that. That's not what I want you to do. I want you to be in control, all right? And Wade, everything we do, Wade goes. And then he, and he looks great. Mine too. My right turns up. I... Yeah. I feel like no matter how much I practice, my right turns are always going to be a problem for me. Nice. Look at my camera, look at my camera. Nice, nice. Head and eyes, good. Head and eyes, look at my camera. Look at me, look at me. Nice. Again guys, I just want you to be comfortable making a U-turn on a country road. You know I want to practice it, I got it. But we can see motorcycle drop guards on the ground. Everything is protected. Yep, everything's protected. All right, so you want to try this or you want me to do it? No, I'll try it. All right. Like that. Get closer, a little closer, okay. One, two, three, pull, push. No, 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 no. Because you shouldn't have to, no, no. You're pulling and pushing at the same time with your legs. One, two, three. Come on, come on, you got it, man. All right, put it down, put it down. Not fast to do it like that, I guess. Did you have your hands like this? Yeah. You sure? Let me see, let me see how you were doing that. Like that. Turn, turn this hand the other way. Yeah, because you're pushing, you're not pulling that. Oh, okay. One, two, three, pull, push. Walk up, walk forward, walk forward. <clears throat> Tell to get old. All right. No damage to the motorcycle except what happened before the saddlebag guards. All right. Do you know what happened there? Yeah. What happened? Uh, goose No. All you did was you didn't keep it loaded. That's always going to be the answer. 
If your motorcycle goes down, it's not rocket science as to why it went down. He let the, he let the preload out. He felt, uh-oh, and let the preload out. So keep it loaded. Listen, that thing sounds good too. Listen to that engine. I don't care if it's 3,000 RPMs. Remember, if you have 4,000 RPMs, it doesn't matter because the clutch is what's, what's determining what gets to the rear wheel, all right? I'd rather it be high than low. And uh, Andrew, I gotta tell you, when you were going through the single serpentine, that bike looks that bike looks pretty, man, the way you were going like this. Oh, that looks so nice, man. All right. See, once again, he's not looking. You got to look before you turn. You got to look before you turn. But the U-turn's excellent. <laughs> There we go. You got to look before you turn. Andrew's head is buried. Head and eyes, baby. Head and eyes. Nice. Nice. Very nice. And I know what Wade's talking about. Like right there, you saw his handlebars jerk a little bit because he got nervous because he felt like he was going to fall. But he handled it. Ah, see? Speed. Too much speed, that's all. All right, this is what we do with preloaders. Get up and do it again. All right, gotta work on it, gotta work on it. Now Andy's gonna stop and then come to a stop over here. Beautiful. Nice stop. Head and eyes, look at me. Very nice, very nice, and very nice. Head and eyes, look at me, look at me. Very nice. I see what's going on. The last time you, the last time you went around, your handlebars jerked a little bit because you felt like you were going to fall, and you said, "Oh," but that quick, you handled it. So you, what you're going through, I like to call it the wrinkled T-shirt. The T-shirt's designed to cover your body. It's doing the job, but it's wrinkled. That's all. You're going to iron it out. Looking good, though. Look at me the whole time. Keep looking at me. Come on. Turn the handlebars. Slow down. Use the rear brake. Keep it loaded. Nice. Nice. Got to keep it loaded. Got to keep it loaded. Look at me, Jerry. Look at me. Look at me. Keep looking at me. Keep it loaded. See, you look down. You look down. And I get it. It's a, you know, when you feel yourself falling, you want to look down. It's like you want to see, what am I getting ready to hit? Very nice. Head and eyes! See, and that's what I'm talking about, guys, when I say you don't have to lean a lot to make this. If you know how to do exercise number two. All right, don't pick up speed at the end until you're done. That's why you're so wide. Try that again. Head and eyes. Look at me, Jerry. Look at me. Look at me. Good, good, good. Keep coming, keep coming. Good. That was excellent. Beautiful. Exercise number one, coming to a smooth stop. 
Beautiful. Keep it loaded. Look at me. Look at me. Keep it coming. Keep keep it turned. All right, stop. If you would have held that turn, you were right here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> keep it loaded, baby. Come on. Look at me. Keep looking at me. Look at me. Come on. Come on. Keep the wheels turned. Keep it turned. Keep it turned. All right. Good. Good. Look at me. Look at me. Excellent. Whoa. So, this is, this is not really for YouTube. So if what I will tell you guys, which I didn't mention, is counterbalancing your body has nothing to do with the making the turn. But what it does do is it makes it takes the sensation of falling away a little bit. So Jerry, when you're making that turn, you because you're not counterbalancing your body, that sensation of falling is greater. Even though you your, your right turns look better than your left turns. Um, so if you want to, try that. Scoot up on the handlebar, I mean on the handlebar. Scoot up on the seat if you need to a little bit. C counterbalancing just means keeping your body straight up while the motorcycle leans under it. All right, that's all it is. All right, one last time. We'll move on to exercise number seven. Very good. Look at me, head and eyes, look at me. Keep letting it out. <laughs> All right, look at me. Good, good, turn it, too much speed, too much speed. You're good, you're good. Woo! Keep it loaded, baby. Yeah. Try that again. Look at me, Jerry, and keep looking at me. Come on. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Look at me. You're looking at the cones. Look at me, Wade. Look at me. Look at me. Keep looking at me. Keep it loaded, too. Preload. Keep it loaded. Keep it right there. Look at me. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Use that rear brake. Turn it. Good. Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Preload. Got to keep that loaded. So that's that's um, Oscar's issue. Keeping it loaded. So far, so good. Even in the turn, he was still able to make it. Good. Look at me. Keep it loaded. Rear brake. Rear brake. Don't smash it. See. Good. He smashed his rear brake, but it kept him within the confines of this U-turn. It also made his handlebars go like that. If that was his front brake, he'd be down. That's why we don't use it. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Good. Good. Woo! Love to see that. Preload. Preload. Keep it loaded. Good. If you look at me. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Good, look at me. Good, keep it loaded. Look at me. Look at me. 
Good. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want them to let the speed, let the clutch out early because then they start going wide. His turn would have been a lot narrower if he kept it, you know, in the friction zone. Good. 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 Look at me. Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Oh my God. Much better. Much better. I was going to go to the next exercise, guys, but it's hard for me to leave an exercise when I see it's starting to come together for somebody. And in this case, for a few of them. Good. Keep it loaded. Good. Good. You're good. You're good. Trust and believe. Trust and believe. Trust and believe it's going to be all right. Just get power to that rear wheel. Unless you hit a cone like I did. <laughs> On an extreme lean. Very good. Good. Look at me. Good. Keep it loaded. Very good. Look at you. Nice. Feather in the rear brake. That's perfect. Don't do it anymore. You got to end on a high note. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to move on to exercise number seven to figure eight. All right. Love a disciplined preloader. He's going to go home doing the pec bounce. <laughs> All right. Listen. I'm saying to myself, I'm feeling some, a little bit of precipitation, so I'm like, I'm I want to move quick, get to the next exercise. But when I see it starting to come together, it's hard for me to leave an exercise. Excellent, man. I mean, that last one, that's why I said don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Got to end on a high note. <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm watching his, his, his foot just feathering that rear brake. He's looking at me the whole time. His elbow was all the way into his body, so he's got a good turn on the handlebars. A nice lean, perfect. You, I see it coming together too. And the funny part is one time, Jerry pulled in, and he was going way too fast. I said, too much speed. So he was like, oh, shit. He, he, he jammed that rear brake, and it made his handlebars do this. But that quick, he let the clutch out. And he, I mean, it's proof that the brake's going to help you stay within the confines of the exercise. So he didn't go out wide. And that's what I was telling Wade. Wade's tough on himself because it don't feel smooth. But it doesn't matter. It's the wrinkled T-shirt theory. <laughs> the T-shirt, the T-shirt's designed to cover your body. So it's, you're doing it. It just doesn't look good. But you're going to iron it out the more you practice. So don't worry about it. And the right turn thing, here's my thing. I've already come to the conclusion, I don't care how much I practice it. It's mental now. Yeah. So the good thing about it is it makes sure that I'm never going to be complacent making a right turn. I have to concentrate more, especially if I'm doing a lot of leaning. All right? So don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, so you're not alone. You are not alone. Okay. <laughs> so... Guys, welcome to the figure eight. Again, remember guys, there's no pressure out here. So if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't do it. This is the same width as that U-turn, 27 feet. It's 46 feet long. So what this entails is you come in here, you come to this corner, and come all the way to this corner, and then make your turn. I want you to use, I used to say use all the space that you have, but now I say use all the space that you need because we don't all need 46 feet but don't rip yourself off because if you turn early here you're gonna have to make up for it down there so use all of this space length and width wise and you're looking at that green cone the first one that's what you're going toward so yes you came in here and went to the corner that's the last time you're gonna go to a corner except when you're leaving so when you get right here I know it's behind you and I know Andrew's already saying I'm not looking at it <laughs> look at that cone if I turn, I can see it in my peripheral vision. But the more you progress in this turn, it's going to become clearer. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Because this is the same width as the U-turn, you don't have to lean a lot. But you have to turn consistently. Because my goal is to get you about in this vicinity. Because the further you are over here, now this turn is going to be tight. So go for it. Go for it. Go for it. When you get about right here, transition. Now I want you looking at the next green cone. I know you're passing it. Look around. There it is. I see it. I see it. Hold 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 it. Transition. And now you're doing the same thing again. Okay? I, I want you guys to understand. I get it. Looking over your shoulder is not a comfortable feeling. Like one time Jerry was going through, and he was fine. And as soon as I 
his motorcycle dipped a little bit, his eyes went down. It's like a natural thing. If you're falling, you want to look down and see what the hell's going on. You want to see what you're about to meet, right? Um, but if you're trusting and believing, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. Head and eyes, head and eyes, head and eyes. And then you go through it twice and you go out. I'm going to demonstrate it for you. Um, the first time I'm going, to, I'm going to show you, use all of the space, all of the space, transition. And then I'm going to do it in motor officer specifications. And I'm only doing it that way to show you nothing about my throttle changes. The only thing that changes is I'm turning my handlebars more. I'm leaning the motorcycle more. That's it. Speed is not your friend in here. If you're going too fast, you want to do one of these loop turns, it's going to bring you all the way about right here. And then this one's going to be tight. Again, if you don't want to do it, don't worry about it. If you're going to hit a cone, just hit it. Just don't put your foot down. Come in here. That cone had a nice. There it is. That's it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. You guys are going to see Andy's not even looking close to my cones. Excellent! Because he's just going by his feel. He knows how it feels. He's got plenty of space for what he's doing. This is plenty of space for him, as you can see. And Andrew didn't use all the space down there, so it's going to make this turn down here tighter. And that's the result. Start it over, Andrew. Start it over. You, you didn't... What happened is you turned here too early. So now you made that turn tighter. Come all the way over here. Use all the space you got. Come right here. Transition. Good. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Transition. Good. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Look at the exit. Look at the exit. No, the exit's over here. <laughs> I can't give him a ka -ching. It's a damn shame. Next time. <laughs> All right, he turned a little early. Good, good, good. Transition. Good. Looking good. Look at me. Look at me. Come on, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Transition. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Easy, easy, go ahead. Look at the exit. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. <laughs> no, you're good. Next time you come through, you got it. Jerry's going to go for it, I think. much speed. Come on, keep it loaded. I don't hear any throttle. 
That throttle's way too low, Oscar. You gotta get that preload up. Try it again. Throttle, 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 throttle. And here's the other problem, Oscar. You're starting your turn from right here. Yeah. So now you're taking away that space. You gotta come all the way over here. Use all the space that you have available. Beautiful, nice and smooth. A little early. Good. Good, very good. His transitions are beautiful. He comes straight. So he's not coming at an angle, so he's using all of the space very well. Now he's gonna look at the, well, he's not gonna look at the exit, but that's where he's going. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's do it, Wade. Made that turn early. You made that turn early. Throttle, throttle, good, good, good. Look at me, look at me, look at me, come to me. Transition, keep it loaded. Good, looking good. Look at me, look at me. Look at down. Yeah, start it over. I thought you were going again. Uh, preload, preload. Stop, stop, stop. So where your motorcycle is? You should be over here. Uh, so whatever you give up here, it's gonna catch you over there. So use all of the space. Bring your front wheel right here. Okay, so all right, start it over. Come right back in. Looks like that sun's trying to peek through. And I don't have my shades. You guys know I need my shades. There we go. That's better. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. All right. Let me try this on the Indian. Not that it matters, but I've never done it on the Indian before. <laughs> Now, I did hear somebody tell me I like the kickstand on the Indian better. I agree. Yeah, it's got the little rubber on the bottom. It's way better. Ugh. We definitely got to work on keeping it loaded. It's yeah. too low. I want you at 2,500 at least. A minimum, 2,500. What? He's got engine guards. He's got saddlebag guards. No damage to the motorcycle. Jerry's a trooper. I'll give him that. That happens. You get caught in the turn. I'm looking better already. That was already better. Way better. Whoa, he turned really early. Really early. <laughs> there we go. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Andrew's looking good, man. He's looking really good. He turned early. He said, you know what? I'll just do a U-turn. So he's going to do well in the snowman. Well, he's going to do well in um, the offset double serpentine, too, of course. S 
Start it over, start it over. So that first turn, well actually that's a left turn, Those are, that's his strong side. But he keeps winning those battles. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Good, keep it loaded, good, good, good. Transition. Head and eyes, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded, look at me. Don't look at the ground, you're looking at the ground. Good, transition. Very nice. Head and eyes. Good, good. Look at me. Come to me. Look at the exit. Head and eyes. Look at the exit. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Look at the exit. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys. We're going to move on to exercise number eight. Is it number eight? Yeah, the offset double serpentine. All right, guys. Offset double serpentine. So, once we leave the figure eight, you hear me yelling, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's going to be relevant here. It's going to be relevant in the snowman as well. Everything that we've done leads up to this. Notice how my motorcycle is facing. I forgot to tell you guys, if you see double cones, that's an entrance or an exit. And that's my bad. That's why when Andrew first did the first thing, he was like, all right, see you later, I'm done. And he just went, <laughs> he just went straight out. I want you guys to come into this exercise like this, because what I don't want you to do, which Andrew, I'm sorry, which Andy is not going to listen to because he likes to challenge himself. I don't want you to go straight to the next cones, because if you go straight to the next cones, this is a hell of a turn to make. And then you're going to go straight to these cones. So. What you were doing in the figure eight is you were going like this. And that's what I want you to do here. When you come in here, I want you to go over here. Not a little bit, a lot. Come way over here. Head and eyes. I don't even know why I keep saying that now. None of you are listening. Head and eyes. <laughs> Turn. That's all I can ask is for you to try. And the reason you're going out that far is now when you come through this gate, you're coming through either like this or like this. So that's good. You're already committed for the next turn. You don't have, nothing is extreme. Head and eyes. Look at the gate you came from. That's what I want you to go for. Go for it. Go for it. Hold it. Hold it. Head and eyes. Handlebars. So you see what's happening here. And when I get to this gate, head and eyes. Look at the gate I came from. That's where I'm going. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Head and eyes so on and so forth. Now I'm going to run through it that way. And then when I come back, I'm going to do it the Andy way, which is just going straight for it. Of course, it's possible. It's just more work. I'm in the business of working smarter, not harder. All the way over here. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Hold it, hold it. Transition. Head and eyes, hold it, hold it, transition. Hold it, transition. Head and eyes. So much more work the other way. The other way is just so much easier. At the end of the day, and that's what Wade's looking for, we want fluidity. We want you to be one with your motorcycle. Nice and easy. What do you got? No, you can start here. Start here. Don't come back. Start here and then go around next person. And then we're going to start from over there. All right? You ready? <laughs> Listen, he wants, to, he wants to get it done, man. Nice, swinging out, nice.
Now, I forgot to tell you guys, the goal is to not go past the outside lines. But again, it's not a competition, not a big deal. Very nice. We had Andy, now we got Andrew. Now, I would have preferred he went out wider, but again, he doesn't have an issue leaning the motorcycle, but it does make him have to work harder. And as you go on, it gets tighter and tighter. But he can handle it. His throttle is steady. He's using his rear brake to control his speed. He's actually turning his head and his eyes. Let me say his head. I can't verify his eyes from here. Very nice. All right. Got Oscar here. Stop! See where you are? You should be over here. Because now... If you go to make this turn, it's not going to happen. You're going to be so wide that there's no way you're going to make the next one. So let's start over. Come to me, Jerry. Come to me. Slow down, slow down. All right, now. Too much speed. Keep it loaded. All right. Come to me. Come to me. Turn, turn. All right. Turn, 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 turn. Throttle, 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 throttle. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes up. Look at me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. All right. I wanted him to keep coming, but he was ready to say, I oh, know I'm ready to make the next turn. I see how wide he is in the next one. Again, he can still do it. But he's gonna have to do the rest of this almost. She's coming right at it at a 90 at a 90 degree angle. So it makes it very tough. Yeah, see? Gotta go out wide. Very nice. So wait. What you did wrong is when I was saying, come to me, come to me, you said, no, I'm done. All you were thinking about is that next turn. Just keep on coming. Because otherwise, everything else just gets tighter and tighter. Excellent. Come to me. Come on, come on, turn, turn, turn. All right. Turn, turn, turn. Preload, preload, preload. Keep going, don't worry about it, keep going. Oh, never mind. Good. Too much speed. Too much speed. Speed is not your friend out here. Come to me. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. There we go. Start over.
Andy is smooth like butter. Let's get the other Andy in here. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. That throttle is too low. It's too low. That first left turn. Nice, Jerry. That first left turn is getting them. He gets nervous and speed. Hey Andrew, start from start from that direction. I'm gonna have him coming from the other direction. Nothing's changed. They're still making the same turns, but you know, sometimes, you know, we all learn differently, and sometimes small changes make a difference. Very nice. All right, snowman next. Very nice. That's kind of kicking Wade's butt. Sometimes you can be going too slow, too. You don't want to be going too slow. Too much speed again. It's taking him out wide. Yeah, it's too much speed. But, you know, that's something you can work on. But he's looking really good. I would have liked uh, Oscar to swing out a little more on that turn. All right, all right. Hold it, hold it. Ah, too much speed. All right, guys. That's it for this. We're going to move on to exercise number nine, the abominable snowman. No pressure. So what Andrew is doing is what I was going to suggest you guys do, which is walk it. So you can kind of get a general idea what the hell we're doing here. All right, guys, this is the abominable snowman. Why is it abominable? Well, it used to just be it used to just be the snowman until I added the the 18 foot circle at the top. There's four of them in here now. We got four. So we got 27 feet circle, 25 feet, 22 feet, 18 feet. Okay. Again, no pressure. You do whatever you feel comfortable doing. Now, the, the important thing about this is hold it, hold it. That's all you're doing here is holding your turn. So when you come in here, now don't rip yourself off. Again, 27 feet might seem like a lot to some, but not to everyone. So if you're going to make a right turn when you come in here, don't start your turn right here. 
because then it's going to catch you over there. Don't cheat yourself. Come all the way over here. Now, you'll also notice I don't have this coned off where you get in here and there's no way out except the way you came in. And I do that for a reason. I don't want people to feel claustrophobic in here, but I do want you to have a sense of confinement. So when you come in here, put your wheels about right here. I know sometimes you, you can't see your wheel. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Bring the wheel about right here and kind of hug these cones. Now, this is more relevant when you get up there because then once you get up here, that's when you start looking over your shoulders to get to wherever you're going to get to. But the key is don't start your turn early, right or left. Come in here, come in here, come in here. Once you go around once, if that was a right turn, of course, this one's going to be a left. Same thing. Come, really? <laughs> don't do that. When you come over here. Don't start your turn early over here. Bring your motorcycle. You see, there's no cone here. So put your wheel there. It's not a competition. Don't worry about it. And don't just commit to the turn. Kind of hug these cones. When you get about right here, now you can start committing. All right? Head and eyes. I don't know why. You definitely ain't going to use it in here. I know it. But head and eyes. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. That's what the green cones are for. I just want you to look at them. And if you choose to keep going, you just do the same thing in there. Now, of course, that one at the top, you know, that's, that's extreme, again, because it's not like an 18-foot U-turn in a box. It's 18 feet all the way around. So you got to, there's no room for error up there. You got to do everything right. You got to lean. You got to turn, blah, blah, blah. That's where head and eyes, if you ain't doing it, it's going to be a problem, usually. Not guaranteed, but maybe. Now, Oscar, you have to keep it loaded in here. You have to. But you are using that rear brake now, so that's good. All the way over. Hold it. Hold it. I'm looking at those green cones right there. Hold it. All the way over. Hug them. Hold it. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. Hold it. Hold it. Just keep doing that. So again, we're just the wheel placement. Where you start is going to determine how the rest of this works out. If you want to keep going and you try it once and you go, nah, I'm good. I'm going to stay here or I'm going to stay here. That's fine. I'm, I'm collecting all of this data for follow the leader. Okay? Now keep in mind, I don't do follow the leader and do stuff I know for a fact people can't do. That's not fun. But I have mental notes of what people can do. So at least if I eliminate some of you, it won't be all of you. Nice. I forgot a cone.
Andrew said, I'm not going out. I'm going to stay in here. He's looking good. It's 25 feet. 22 feet. Starting that turn early. I'll let him know the only reason he didn't make that. Because he just hit these cones. Hey, Andrew! The only reason you didn't make that is you started that turn too early. Okay. Over there. That's the only reason you didn't make that. If you got closer, because you just hit this. So, you know, anything you give up over there, it's going to catch you here. Next time you come through, I'll be standing over there. Go all the way over. Nah, I'll do it this. I'll do it. Huh? No, let me do it. I like to practice it. What happened there? Preload. That's what happened. Not enough power. It's the only way the, the motorcycle is only going to fall if there's no power. So make sure you. And your motorcycle sounds good, man. So make sure you're listening to that engine. Keep it loaded. I want him to keep his speed down. Even pulling out here and making that turn. There's dirt and gravel here. Not the best place to have speed and lean. Preload. I don't hear that engine. There we go. I want to hear that. I want to keep hearing it. Good. Good. Nah, too early, too early. But that first turn was good. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded, baby, keep it loaded. We having a preload issue out here, a preload shortage. People refusing to keep it loaded. <laughs> I don't need to be down here for, for Andy. Very nice. Very nice, Andy. And you notice on Andy's bike, he doesn't have to have his preload high. The idle on his bike is high enough. BMWs are the same way. But on our Harleys and our Indians, we have to keep that preload up. You can do this on a BMW motorcycle and, and just let it do it at idle and you'll be fine. Not the case with us. Got to keep it loaded. Plus, our throttles on Harley Davidson's, they're fickle. You know, they fluctuate. All right, let me get over here for, for Andrew. Yep, oh, took out the, the entrance cones. No big deal. There we go. Very nice. You know, when certain people have a certain skill level, you start to see, it's not about a technique thing, you just have to tell them where to place the wheels on their motorcycle. And they'll put the rest together. Preload, preload! If I put a microphone on this motorcycle, you'll hear the throttle just goes up and then it goes way down. Preload, preload, preload. Don't blip it. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. And you know what? If Oscar is comfortable just doing the 27 feet, just do the 27 feet. We don't want to put the cart before the horse. This is all about building your confidence. 
If you're doing something that you're not ready for, it's, it's just, there's a chance that it can take a shot at your confidence. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep moving forward, not backwards. Nice. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. You gotta come over here some more. You gotta come over here some more. Hey Oscar, just just do this circle, Oscar. Just this circle. Keep it loaded, Oscar. I'm gonna make you write that a hundred times and hand it in to me. Keep it loaded. Too early, too early, too early. Turn too early. There we go. Now learn. Turn. Good, good. Lean it. Lean it, baby. Lean it. There we go. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. Good, good, good. All right, we got Oscar doing some push-ups. Discipline, discipline VI preloaders out here, guys. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the bonus exercise. The maze. All right, guys, the maze. If you choose to accept the challenge, other than Andy. So all this is... It's a bonus exercise, so, you know, it's the same as any other exercise. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, you don't do it. But what I will tell you is, all this is, is one, two, three. If you're going on this side, you're making three left turns, three U-turns, left U-turns. Over here, if you're going on that side, you're making right U-turns. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Two lefts and one right, two rights and one left. These are 18-foot U-turns. So if you know up until now you have not made one 18-foot U-turn out here, this is not going to happen. All right? Um, but all it is is, like I said, you go up, head and eyes. Andy is screwing that theory all up. Head and eyes. Now, a lot of the times over here, a lot of you guys, and again, it was wheel placement. So when Andrew went through the first time in the 25-foot circle, I'm, clear, I'm looking at him and I can see the only issue is he's starting to turn too early. I see he has the skill. When somebody has a certain skill and technique level, you already know. All you have to do is tell them, just put your wheel here, and they'll figure out the rest. And he did good. Here, same thing. You don't have a whole lot of room to give up. Um, Andy can start early and still make it on his motorcycle. Enough talking. I'm going to do it. Whoever else wants to do it, other than Andy. And Andy's over there acting all good. I don't know if I can do it. He's so full of shit. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to hustle us. Nobody's betting. Listen, because at the end of the day, guys, this is about building your confidence. That's why I don't want you to do something that you clearly should know. I'm not there yet. You know, you got to, you know, this is baby steps. Go ahead, Andy. Show them how it's done without, not the head and eyes part, just the rest. <laughs> yeah. Now, Andy's motorcycle, it's like a BMW motorcycle. You hear how low his idle is? A BMW motorcycle, you could do this at idle. You don't even need to preload it. We don't have that luxury with these motorcycles. If you let it go too long, it's going to shut off. It's going to stall. <laughs> Andy.
Andy covering his mouth and everything. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> F-O-S. <laughs> Anybody else? I'll try it. I'm going to try. Alright. That's all we could do is try. Hmm? That's just cones. I like watching you pick them up, too. <laughs> <laughs> now you notice as he's making a turn his head's like this you got to turn your head and your eyes I, I think I'm doing a lot better with my head and my eyes and you are doing better you're also doing a lot of you know Shifting with the body, too. Yeah, whatever helps, man. Head and eyes. He can do this. He can do it. Yeah. Andrew, you, you can actually do that. Going in this direction, you did it. Like you made a U-turn right here. All right, so let me say this. You can't do this straight up. You have to lean. Now, if you were riding a, a Rebel 750, you could do it straight up. Can you do this straight up on that bike? I don't think so. Let me see something. Come here. You know what? Just pull all the way over here and stop and just like walk it with the handlebars locked. That'll let us know. Well, you could have did it with the engine going, you know what I mean, just, yeah. just creep it. You know, I get it oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I, yeah, I no, I don't want you to have to walk it like that. No, no, no. I'm holding it up, I'm holding it up. <laughs> yeah, it'll do it. It'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, so your motorcycle could do it. I can't. Kickstand? I can't quite reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the seat. And... So, Wade, on his motorcycle, he doesn't have to lean. Not ours. Yeah. You trying it again or you're done? Same thing with him. He's got to. He's got to throw that motorcycle over. All right, we're done here. All right, guys, we got everything we're gonna get out of the maze. Time for follow the leader, baby. One of my favorite things to do out here. All right, guys, follow the leader. Just in case you're not familiar with the rules, the rules are follow the leader. So do what I do, as the, the same way I do it. So what I'm referring to is, when we get to the right turns and the left turns, or any turn, if my wheels, I'm using this line as an example, but even if there's no line there, if my wheels are here, and I'm going to make a left turn, and you go, no, screw that, I'm going to come over here, because it's easier for me, you're out. All right, because I didn't do that. It's follow the leader. Now, when I say you're out, pull your motorcycle into the middle of the parking lot, and we're going to do a circle around you, one circle, and then jump into the back. I used to have people doing slick stuff, like, all right, I'm... They would stop like right there. So we'd be making a circle around a sand pit. You know? <laughs> so no, the middle of the parking lot right there. Okay. If I stop 
before I make a turn and you just roll through the turn, you're out. If you roll on the grass, on any portion that is bordered by grass, meaning the concrete, we're on the concrete, you hit the grass, you're out. If you put your foot down, you're out. If you hit a cone, you're out. Now, at some point, we're going to leave the parking lot. If you do any of those things out there, don't abandon us and come back here because you're out. Just stay with us. And as soon as we get back here, pull to the middle, we'll do the circle, and then we'll keep it going. The last thing I always do is follow the leader. I follow the leader is the slow ride, and of course my goal is to get you to put your foot down, and that happens on this sidewalk. If you put your foot down, don't sit there and have a fit about it, not a person behind you, you're screwing them. Get the hell out of the way. Either pull, <laughs> either pull off the curb or pull into the grass. Okay, any questions? All right, let me get, my gear, let me get geared up. I'm gonna have a 360 camera on me. So if I don't catch it in my mirror, when I'm editing it, if I see you didn't do something, but you stayed in, I'm going to blow you up. I'm just telling you.
All right, guys, we, we're done with Follow the Leader. I just had a bunch of, uh, we had a, I had to talk with these guys, just letting them know that, you know, at the end of the day, this is all about building your confidence. So I don't want you trying something. I really prefer that you not try something if you know deep down inside that you're not there yet. Because we, we don't want your confidence to take a shot. Some people's confidence take a shot and they're kind of ruined. Everybody's different. But here's what I will say. Oscar. Now, Oscar was struggling on exercise number four, just turning those handlebars initially, right? Now, when we did follow the leader, sometimes people do better when they follow the leader. But when we're making a turn right and left on that sidewalk, that's way more narrow than the seven and a half feet we were doing here. So when I see Oscar or Jerry go onto the grass a little bit, in their minds, they're like, damn it. But in my mind, I'm like, that's awesome. Because if I would have took you there when we first got here, you would have been mowing the grass. You know, you'd have been way out there. So again, I see the progress. I hope you guys do. So we're going to talk to these guys first and foremost. Let's get Wade up here. Come on up, because Wade is so Wade good. is very hard on himself. <laughs> All right, Wade, did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, I had a great time. Good. So, what did you rate yourself when you first came? Three, I think. Any change in that number? 3.01. <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm, yeah, I mean, three to four, somewhere in there. Okay, good. Because you... I'm... In I mean, my like, opinion, to attend's like a professional more yeah, like yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I'm a five yet, but on. listen, I, I don't rate anybody, yeah. but I will. I can I can agree and disagree. Please. I disagree, and I never disagree with somebody's high number, but I always disagree if the number's too low. Mm. You're not a three. Okay. I can tell you that right I now. I don't. That's why I don't know how to rate myself either. But. Okay. All right, but you know what? And where are you from again? Atlanta metro area. Okay, so I'm. I know Jerry told me he'll be back. Yeah, you know, we'll be back sometime. Yeah, maybe. absolutely. Looking forward to seeing you. Yeah. Pleasure meeting you, man. Yeah. Thanks I for coming out. Great course to build your skill set and oh, learn. Oh, absolutely, I absolutely. Appreciate it. And next time you come, I'm gonna bring my limited out here, so at least I'm we look alike. Deuce. You, if I hear about that deuce one more time, <laughs> <laughs> tell me what a deuce is. I'm not sure what a deuce is. Oh, okay. Like a standard almost. Okay, okay. Well, you remember the rules don't change. Yeah. You know, Jerry, what'd you rate yourself when you first came out? A one. Any change in that? 1.25. Yeah. I don't care what you said, but it's definitely not a 1. Because I have to tell you, somebody that's a 1 doesn't even make it to exercise number 4. Like when I do private lessons, most of my private lessons, I don't get that far. You know? And if I do get that far, that's kind of where it ends. So you're not a 1. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right? I appreciate you coming out. You guys are from the same kind of area? Yeah. All right. And you said you might be coming for a private, a private lesson. lesson. Yeah. Absolutely. Because again... This is good, but sometimes one-on-one -on -one is better for people. They learn better. They don't feel like they're holding anybody back or whatever. So, and then it's all about you. All right? Looking forward to seeing you. Pleasure to meet you, man. Yes, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, man. Next. Come on up, Andrew. Andrew's been defying me all day. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just my glasses. It just makes me look like I'm looking the right way. <laughs> now, I'm laughing because when, when we watch this video, when this video, well, the video will be out, but Andrew's going to see... His eyes is not, it's not just his eyes, it's his head and his eyes. He's like this, but okay. did excellent. What'd you rate yourself when you first came? Six. Any change in that number? Uh, I'm more confident six. Okay, good. Absolutely. And I, where did you come from again? Oh, Florida. Florida, but originally Pennsylvania. Okay. Oh, good. You're a northerner like me. Yeah, I'm a northerner. Okay, very good. All right, man. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. And I hope to see you back here. See you in Daytona, too. Yes, see you in Daytona. Come on up, Oscar. Oscar, what did you rate yourself when you first came? Three. Any change in that number? No. No? Okay. No. And that's fine. I want people to know if I ask that, there's no anticipation of you going up. If you feel like you're where you were, then you're where you were. If you feel like you're worse because you rated yourself a little high, no problem with that. Now, you, unlike these guys, are in the backyard of this parking lot, correct? Yes, indeed. So I expect to see you here more than I don't. I expect that. Yeah. Oh, you're going to get tired of seeing me. Okay, good. No, I won't. I absolutely <laughs> won't. Appreciate you, man. Pleasure yeah, meeting you. Yeah, of course, of course. Nice All meeting. right, man. And last but certainly not least, come on up here, Andy. Andy gets the BS. He gets the <laughs> FOS award of the... <laughs> he gets the FOS award of the day. What would you rate yourself when you first came? Seven. Any change in that? Seven. Okay, good. <laughs> he's, he, and he's phenomenal on the motorcycle. It really is. You, and I got to tell you, if you guys... What practice session were you at first? Do you know? Who knows? 35. 35? Yeah. If you guys look at the first practice session Andy came here. True. I think the first one you were on the. I was on that. You were on that. You sure? Yeah. I thought you were on the Honda. No, that was the second one. The second. Well, 
I can see the difference in your skill and your confidence. But here's the key. It's not like Andrew comes here and then the next one comes again and in between there's no practice. You have to continually practice, guys. I say this all the time. It's a perishable skill. And the more confident you get, this becomes so much more fun. So much more fun. Give me my mic because I'm not giving you a chance to say something that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but always a pleasure, Andy. Always a pleasure. Bobby CVO19, come up here, man. Yeah, man. I want to show people what, uh, uh, what... He's not a VI preloader, but he came by to just say hi. It's all about support, you know, and that's what I love. If you guys want to come by and just hang out, that's always a good thing. What do you rate yourself slow speeds 1 to 10? Because you, you live been, here now, right? I've, I've been practicing a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I started off when I first came here. Uh, I, I started myself at a 1. Mm -hmm. um, I think I moved up to a 2 because okay. I have been practicing a little bit here good. and there. Good. So. Now, he moved here from Jersey, correct? Yes. So now you live how many minutes from this parking lot? Uh, eight minutes. Okay, guys, put down in the comment section why you don't see Bobby CVO19 at these practice sessions every time I'm having them, right? He's the boss. I'm where having he works. a hard time waking up on Sunday. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my mic, man. Good Thank to you. see you, man. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming All right, by. Cool. All right, guys, another practice session in the books, practice session number 38. It's a wrap. Awesome time with these guys. You know, everybody improved, and that's always the key. Everybody improved. Right? It's a little sticky out here, but you know what? It didn't rain. Rain was in the forecast, and it kind of went away. So I appreciate that. I appreciate my VIP loaders for picking up the cones and just being positive. It's all about positivity out here, guys. You know that. Again, never any pressure. So, guys, wrapping it up, I want to say to you, I appreciate you all. I want you to practice. I want you to understand how important practice is. And like I was telling uh, Brad, I don't know if I told him on camera or off. If I did already, I'll repeat it because it's worth repeat, repeating. Seat time does not equal practice time. And he tells me, I used to, he said, I rode this other bike and I rode like this. And so I asked him, well, did you ride like this? In other words, were you out practicing like this? And he said, no, but I do a lot of riding here and there. None of that stuff means anything. I want you guys to know that because at, at those speeds, your motorcycle is staying up by itself. But when you come out here and you practice this stuff, it's proving that, you have the capability and the knowledge and the skill to operate this motorcycle without the motorcycle helping you. You're being the boss. And that's what I want you guys to do because, like I always say, it's going to make you a more confident rider. And the more confident you are at riding this, the safer you're going to be. I hope that I'm getting through to you guys when I say that because that is just... There's no if, ands, or buts about it. If you don't practice on this motorcycle to transform your instincts to muscle memory skills, you're going to have problems. Or you're going to increase the odds that you have problems. Because, yeah, you know, you're going to get the guys that say, I've been riding 100,000 years. I've never had an accident. Everything's been working out so far, right? But you never know when your number's going to get punched. And when your number gets punched, when you get called, are you going to be ready? And that's what this is about, guys. It's about going home safe. It's not about, you know, worrying about hurting your motorcycle. It's not going to hurt it. It's not going to damage it if you protect it properly. You saw I dropped my motorcycle today, and I think that's about the seventh time I dropped this motorcycle. It looks good, right? It looks good. So nothing's going to go crazy. I'd rather drop it out here in a controlled environment than out there on the street. All right, guys? So again, again, repetition equals retention, so I have no problem repeating it. Please practice, 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 guys. And let me also say, practice doesn't mean you have to come out here and set up a bunch of cones. You just need to be consistent in what you're doing. So if every time you go for a ride, you just do a couple of U-turns, maybe some figure eights, and then you go on your ride. If you do that every single time, that counts. Trust me, that's practice. Because our biggest obstacle out here is this. It's mental, it's not physical, right? For some of us, it's physical. Some people have physical disabilities. That's, and that's, that's one thing. So yes, they're fighting that as well. But what I'm gonna do a video on is how your motorcycle setup can be affecting the way you feel when you ride it at slow speeds. And by setup, I'm talking about your handlebars, your seat, your brake pedal, your floor pegs, you know, whatever. That's what I'm gonna do a video about, all right, guys? All right, guys, so anyway, that's gonna do it for me, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, all right? If you like any of my videos, hit the subscribe button. It helps out my channel and it allows me to continue to do what I'm doing for you guys. It's the best way to show your support. It doesn't cost you a thing and you only have to do it one time. All right, guys, spend more time being thankful for the things that you have, less time complaining about the things that you don't. 
I want to acknowledge my brothers and sisters in blue. Please be careful out there, guys, and know that you're appreciated. Special shout out to the NYPD Highway Patrol, particularly Highway 1, and the Highway District, because that's where the motorcycle school is. That's who taught me how to ride these motorcycles the way I ride them. But it doesn't end there, guys. I continue to and will continue to practice, practice, and I'm going to bring you guys along with me. All right, guys. Until next time.